Good night. Good evening, Great Britain. Sorry, James is talking. Sorry, James. Go on. Sorry. Go on. <laughs> if you want to... <laughs> Sorry about that. It's absolutely I fine. I didn't have time. It's, it's absolutely yeah. fine. Welcome to the computer game show. Uh, my name is Sean Bell. I'm joined by James Farley. Hello. Uh, Dave and Matt could not be here this week. Well, Dave could be here, but he's chosen not to be. Uh, we, we've just found out. You go. Dave goes on holiday tomorrow, uh, but he wants to get an early night. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah. And Matt is Matt is actually on holiday. I think so. That's valid. Um, but Matt is still going to, we, we, well, just saying just before we started the recording, we hope Matt is going to upload the podcast because none of the rest of us know how to do it. So instead of Matt and, <laughs> Matt and Dave, um, we've got Sarah Dyer. Hello. And Sean the boat. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Have you both had a nice Easter? Does Easter mean anything to either of you spiritually or leisure wise? Is, is it any significance other than time off? No, time off, and me and my partner got given an Easter egg that was like that big. <laughs> Just for, for everyone listening to the podcast, Sarah is gesturing the entire height of her webcam. It's it's it's, it's, it's bigger. It's bigger. It's bigger than my head, and yeah. it has a crocodile on it. Cool. It's nice. like a croc. You might have seen. I think we saw it come up on an advert for like Lidl or Audi, mm-hmm. and it's one of their like giant Easter eggs. Nice. That was pretty good. But cool. we did try and go to the British Museum on Friday, uh-huh. and it was closed because what? of train strikes. That oh, yeah. I... there another... okay. Was well, there valid. train strikes? There on was Friday? train strikes. Yes. <laughs> oh, because like it was perfectly fine for us to get the train into London. So we got to the got to the museum. And we were like, oh, you, yeah. You would assume oh. everything else would be fine if you, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every... <laughs> everything else was like all the other everything else was open mm. all the other museums were open but obviously the british museum is like miles away from everything else right um yeah so a mixed easter for you then pretty much yeah how about you sean uh easter would usually mean some forms of copious alcohol like mm-hmm. christmas mm-hmm. um but luckily this year um it was the star wars celebration in london oh yeah so you were at I, that weren't you yeah i spent a couple of days there so the last time it was in 2016 when i last went in excel mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I spent a couple of days there with my good friend mm-hmm. and there was lots of announcements and lots of things to buy and it was generally lovely at lots of crowds as you can imagine but mm-hmm. um one thing I've definitely noticed, and I, was, I mentioned it at the show, was when you pay like more than 60 quid for a ticket, you don't really get <laughs> a lot of people who are just going to be there to kind of ruin the time because it's yeah. not like. So it was just literally everyone that was there was all dedicated and lovely. And, you know, it was amazing. So, yeah, I spent, that's how I spent my, uh, my Christmas, my Easter, <laughs> <laughs> almost Christmas. No, far from it. Um, how about you both? I mean, James, you, you have had bank holidays, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, we've yeah. literally just had this chat, but let's pretend to just have it again <laughs> for the sake of this. <laughs> we, we, as I said, we've had four days of everything being closed, mm-hmm. which is a bit annoying. Mm-hmm. We went to see the Mario film on Saturday, oh, which yeah. we'll probably get into we later. Will. Yes, but also it was a horrible day. Um, oh, good. Apart from seeing Mario, because uh, the whole thing about german like uh you know trains being very efficient and everything Mm -hmm. it's not really true (laughs) and it's like it like recently in particular it's really not true and Mm -hmm. like we were trying to get home and it took us you see normally it's a 45 minute journey and it took us Mm -hmm. about three and a half hours wow um, because there was continuous cancellations of trains and you know it was and also there's like these ominous messages like it says things like police involved like this (laughs) this, you're like you're like okay Wow. And then, there, then later on, there was people on the line like this. And so oh, it's like. <laughs> hang on. Oh, no. no, no, I know. I thought it could be that, but it wasn't. I okay. Checked. It's uh, No, it wasn't. It wasn't okay. that. It was, it's also because there was football supporters that were doing things. Um, <laughs> doing yeah, things. Were, okay. Just yeah. doing things. Cool. <laughs> well, let's <laughs> leave that. Just being, just yeah. being silly little guys. <laughs> But either way, it's not, not been very efficient recently. And uh, yeah, a bit, bit annoying. It's still so, cheap, though, right? Yes, it's very well, cheap. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's yeah, something. Right. 45 euros for a month, but, you know. <laughs> <not>. <laughs> we wow. should 
start the show by thanking our Patreon producers for this month. They are Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks chap, Simon Nelson, Jack Oven, Moomin Biscuit, Trans Rights of Human Rights, Dave Ernsberger, Colin Brown, Gasman, Rocketman76, Grey Dragon Claw, Smooth Monkey, Don Whiskerando, Colin Smith, Richard Sawyer, John Tempelli, Jackie Sniper, Gordon Garrow, Brackets, Safe As Records, Sam Higton, Freelance Police and Steve Garrett, the slow Kindle bloke. They all went to patreon.com forward slash TCGS and went full Nels. You can do that if you want or you can go one of the lower tiers and just get a bonus podcast or a bonus video thing. Are we, James, are we doing for your consideration this month? Yes, we are. Good. Because um, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I've got see, I've got some suggestions that I want to run by you. Yeah. Um. You know before because I think I, I I understand that there needs to be a level of quality control for this. <laughs> but I think it may be a good idea if we have a look at it. Together and maybe there maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe there doesn't need to be any any quality well, control. It's uh, you know I just don't want it to I don't want because I'm quite excited about this idea <laughs> and I don't want it to be a disaster. <laughs> and uh, isn't you know, it funnier so, if it is a disaster though when we back yeah, something dis- really rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have a good disaster and a bad disaster. Okay. And I don't want it to be a bad disaster. You know. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Johnston UK in the chat is saying they've been left off the full Nels list. I will have to investigate that separately, Johnston. I am sorry. Matt's not. Matt usually does this. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I am truly sorry if that is a that is a genuine error. Um, but yeah, and obviously yeah. So we'll, we will also do um, a bonus podcast this month at some point we haven't set a date yet um i'll probably talk about my bladder if anyone's keen if anyone wants to pay money to hear about that probably not uh, i'm but, just gonna know. set myself a reminder to cancel for this month then you should well it's too late you've already paid for this month so you're getting it whether you like it or not so. <laughs> gotta listen to it now yep <sighs> um but i'll also talk about getting a new poppy so yes. oh, okay right feedback I mean, James, you weren't here last week. What did you make True. of it? I, I mean, I obviously enjoyed it. Uh-huh. Um, I thought it was a very good show. Mm-hmm. You know, I know it was, was brilliant. I really enjoyed him being on. It was it was very good. Um, I did have two points okay, um, on. that I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're not even negative points or anything at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, what, there was one of the questions about whether, you know, who would like to go to space. Oh, that yeah, was yeah. Uh, yeah. the question. 100% I'd do that. Would you? Like, 100% <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be wanting to do that, yeah. If I could leave this earth, I'd be very happy with doing that. <laughs> you know, I w- wouldn't care it's, about the it, it, it sounds It sounds like it's not about just going to space. It's more just getting the hell away from this planet for exactly. you. Exactly. That's true. I, I think, but no, not just that, though. I mean, I've always been absolutely fascinated by space, and I just, I'd love to go there. And if it meant risking my life within reasonable bounds, <laughs> then I would, I would definitely be up to doing that. So if they could give you like a percentage chance of death or injury, yeah, what's the maximum you'd accept? Um, I'd accept I'd like thirty or forty percent. Oh my god! You know, oh that wow. it's gonna, oh know, my god! Know. James is going to die yeah. in space. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. I'd love to do it. I yeah. think it'd be brilliant. You know, yeah. just to get away from this. I think it'd be fun. Uh, anyway, uh, the other <laughs> thing was that. Um, yeah, I was kind of, I was gutted actually last week to miss the show mm-hmm. because because of all the stuff around Jeff Keighley. I wanted to talk about him. I do, um, love, and, you do you love know, Jeff stuff. Keighley. I do. I love Jeff. I think he's amazing. <laughs> and, so, and so I was disappointed that I didn't get the chance to talk about that. And uh, but it's all right because David did a, a good job, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, it's all good. Cool. Right, um, the listeners. So we've got Karen from Camp. Uh, who says, I know it's probably never going to happen, and I think I've said this before, but I really feel like everyone that isn't Dr. Boomstick should really go back and finish the Telltale The Walking Dead series. The final season is just so good, IMO, and as the captain of Canterbury once said, it evokes a combination of season one as well as Life is Strange season two. I get that it's a lot, especially if you want to play all the episodes you missed in between the first and the final, but it's worth it. Bong! Okay, that's fair enough. James, any... Anything to add? I mean, I'm I'm not. I'm never going to do this. I know you're not, but it's a shame because it mm. is excellent. Mm-hmm. Like they are really, really good games, actually, and especially mm-hmm. like the way that they ended the series off was fantastic. I was going to uh, say, and because that and that beat all the odds to finish on a, mm. a high, right? Because what was the situation? So the I mean, they got shut down like halfway through the season. Is that right? And yes. And they managed to, yeah, they managed to get enough people together to finish it off under yeah. a new publisher 
Because it was um, Skydance, wasn't it? I think it was yes. It Skydance? Yeah, yeah, who, yeah, yeah, who took yeah. it um, over the whole thing and mm-hmm. then they, you know, made it happen. And mm-hmm. it was really good. Like, as you said, like way better than you'd have expected considering the, the situation. Yeah. And uh, and it was a really nice way to, to end the series as well. And mm-hmm. it's just a shame because it, it does feel like one of those series whereby it was a big hit when it first came out. People loved it. Everyone was, you know, going on about Game of the Year and all that kind of stuff. And then it kind of had a bit of sort of missteps with the second series of it. But then, mm-hmm. which meant that people just kind of forgot about it and didn't bother. And for those of us that did, you know, continue on with it, it, it was excellent. Like, mm-hmm. really very good and uh, very, very solid, you know, by the end. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd re- it's not, they're not even that long, Sean. I, you've got nothing to do, you know? It's easy. <laughs> was, was that final season the one that had a new protagonist in it? No. Uh, it's uh, Well, it, it still goes back to Clementine again. Um, right. But then there are obviously quite a lot of cast changes and things that that change because of the you know because of the story but um no, yeah. it was excellent cool there you go. michael says hello other michael can we be civil unlike all these stuart pricks i really hope your speech goes well everyone is usually half cut by the time you do your speech and they all know how difficult it is anyhow so try not to worry you'll nail it amazing show of solidarity between the michaels unlike the stuarts um mm. I mean, the the thing about everyone being half cut, does that not embolden some people to speak up at wedding reception and be like, and and start heckling? I think so. Yeah. That's, I mean, that uh, hasn't that been my be, experience. Be risk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I wonder if other Michael will actually write in and let us know how that went. It'd be interesting. <laughs> and I remember a wedding I went to in China with this, and it was it was it was terrible because it went on all day. <laughs> and also everyone and like Chen wasn't there because she was back in the UK and I was there on my own and I went to this wedding and it was this guy who kept on dancing all the time and kept on shouting at me that he wanted to dance as well and I was just pretending not, not like, with you just in general no 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 with me oh, right, as okay. well like he was he was quite keen on this idea mm. and uh, yeah it was I, I remember then going back on the bus and like because we had to take this bus you know because it was out in the countryside and I remember just sitting there, like, just, like, hiding as much as possible <laughs> because he kept on just shouting, La way, La way, come up here. Like, this kind of thing, which is, like, foreigner, you know, like, come up here. Brilliant. And, just, like, pretending I didn't know who he was. It was very strange. <laughs> See, because I, yeah, because yeah, I don't dance, uh, well, ever, but especially Me in neither. weddings. Um, yeah. And there's, like, there's some, pe- you know, there's, like, some people who will insist on trying to get you to do it because they genuinely just think you need a bit of a helping hand. And I'm like, no. I just don't want to. Please leave it alone. But then there's people like Dave, um, who are like, I was specifically just doing it to wind you up, because um, he has done like that. To me. No, no, it's no, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's better, very unlike him to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I, at least at least Dave's honest with his intentions and is not completely mm. misreading the situation like the first group. Would you, would you both say if there was enough Dutch courage in you both, you still wouldn't dance? Or well, I don't drink. You see, that's the problem. So I forgot, yeah. I no. do drink and I still wouldn't dance. I feel like I feel like weddings weddings are gonna be the best time to kind of be like, no, you know what, I'm gonna get up and dance because ev- no one can dance at weddings. True, <laughs> and most people are hammered, so basically no one's yeah. gonna remember anyway. Yeah, exactly. but you could you could dance or you could slide along the floor on your knees. That's more fun. Dance, oh, that is a dance. Yeah. <laughs> that is the dance. Not... I, feel like, I, feel, I feel like if I did that, my knees, like, it, the, the entire thing would just, like, crumble into dust. <laughs> yeah, plus if you're wearing tights, that's... Or, or even just nice trousers that you don't want to fuck up. Do you know what I mean? It's, not, it's just not a good idea. <laughs> Seamus. Says, hey guys, bit of feedback on last week's show. When discussing favourite games you've never played, did Dave really say the phrase, what's Dwarf Fortress? Yeah, of course he did. Of course he doesn't know what Dwarf Fortress is, even though it's sold like millions of copies and it's been around for like 10 years. Is this like a Warhammer thing? No, it's it's one of these like incredibly (laughs) detailed sort of management slash life simulators where you run a a dwarf fortress, funnily enough. (laughs) Um, so I I I bought it oh yeah. when I, I saw I saw this I saw this on the dock mm-hmm. and yeah so I I just kind of in my mind I thought it was something like Dungeon Keeper mm-hmm. and I used to love Dungeon Keeper mm-hmm. so I was like that reminds me I'm gonna go buy Dwarf Fortress mm-hmm. and then before we started recording I think 
I got to maybe the fifth or sixth step of the tutorial <laughs> and went, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's there intense. Is, there is too much going on here. I'm probably going to refund it. Oh, really? You're giving up? <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. meant to be amazing. I've still not played it. I've, I've bought it and still not actually played it. Um, I can I can definitely see how people think it's amazing, mm. but for me it was I was like this is this is far too overwhelming. Yeah. I I can't get on with it at all. If, you... if I if I'd got it if I'd got it in the sale, I probably would keep it, but mm-hmm. I paid like twenty five pound for it, mm-hmm. so yeah, I probably will refund it. But mm. you know they've they've posted all their sales stats on mm. Twitter. Mm-hmm. I don't feel bad about refunding it. No, no, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> I've, seen, right. I've seen how much money they've made and how yeah. many copies they've sold. Yeah. One refund's not going to hurt them. Mm-hmm. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's kind of an, an amazing story because it's basically two guys that made it, right? And they've been sort of doing it in their spare time for like a decade, possibly longer. And then it finally got a Steam release like a couple of months back and now they're multimillionaires. So, yeah, fair, fair play. I'm <laughs> very happy for him. Um, if you if you like the look of it, Sarah, but it seemed a bit much, have a look at RimWorld because that's like a sort of sci-fi take on the same thing, and it's not quite as in depth. Um, and it's just like it's just amazing at generating weird stories. Um, I yeah, highly recommend it. I might just I might just see I might just buy Dungeon Keeper again. Or that <laughs> just play Dungeon Keeper yeah. instead. Yeah, always an option. The, sorry, I just sorry. That's just giving me a weird flashback. The like bondage dungeons. That was <laughs> yes, a weird thing to see when I was like twelve. Dungeon Keeper, yeah, with the yeah. dominatrix and the torture rooms. Yeah, was but it was a good thing, right? Didn't it like make your units stronger by getting tortured or something? Yeah, well, you used to have some units that used to go in there for fun, but it was used as yes. a room to take the, the the good guys to kind of break their morale oh, or something like that. that but it. you used to have your own units go in there for yes. fun. And yeah, that was very oh, difficult to try and Yeah, because yeah, they're, they're demons, so they enjoy the things that the good people wouldn't enjoy. Yes. <laughs> was this, yes. this is a Molyneux thing, right? Yeah, this was a Molyneux game, yeah. Did he work on yeah, the second it's... one? I can't remember. He definitely works on the fir- first one, but yeah. <sighs> anyway, uh, living it listener just says I fucking love Inel. That is all. Correct opinion. I always, I don't know, <laughs> James. I don't know if you had the same thing because so the first time Inel was on, it was me that missed it, and I was mm-hmm. like, and I, I think I said on the show, like, I listening back to it, I was just absolutely gutted that I wasn't there for it. Did you have the same? Do you have FOMO listening to it? Of course, yeah. and then you get the whole. Uh, I, I could just be replaced, like really easily. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I mean, if I know, I mean, it's two things. Is one is yeah, like it's just he's an he's an amazing presence on the show anyway. And the other thing is, for anyone who watched the video version, I think he might have emboldened me to try putting my hood up over my headphones. I think I've always assumed <laughs> that's just not done, and then I saw him do it, and he looked really cool. So I might copy him. <laughs> The last bit of feedback we have comes from Major Tim Peake. <laughs> he says, hi, lads. Major Tim Peake here. Long time slash first time, etc. As someone who spent time on the International Space Station, I'd just like to let you know that it's actually incredibly similar to the VR version. Motion sickness is a real problem in space. If you start feeling a bit green, you risk making a mess all over the space floor, the space walls, the space ceiling, and in every space nook and space cranny. And with only one space mop on board, you really want to avoid that. To get around being reacquainted with our astronaut lunches in zero G, we undergo months of training to quickly warp between one spot and another. I'll tell you though, it's a difficult habit to break once we're back on old Mama Earth. The other day I was in B&Q and instinctively went to zip up to a high shelf, completely forgot gravity was a thing, and ended up with copper pipe fittings all over the place. <laughs> I mean, thanks, thanks, uh, Major Peak, for sending that in. Um, yeah. That was obviously in response to was it Dave and I were talking about. Yeah, so he was he was getting really motion sick playing that International Space Station sim, which mm. I've still not tried. Um, but yeah, so it's good to get that from Major Tim Peake himself. Which is, I mean, it wouldn't couldn't possibly not be him. It's got I mean, his I name just, on it. I was so. I was suspicious. Yeah. Um, about this, I just like you know did a Wikipedia search for the mm. name. Yeah. And he is still a major. Is he? So I think I think this is legit. They got the okay, and it couldn't possibly yeah. be that whoever sent this in just googled it themselves. And check. Well, I mean, to 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 back to back up that it is that it is actually him. Mm-hmm. So there's there's 
this kind of arguments for and against within like the statements. So it's like about forgetting gravity is a thing. Like mm -hmm. there are loads of videos of astronauts because obviously when you're when you're in space, you can just like if you've got like a cup or a pen or something, and you need to, you can just let it go and mm -hmm. then like pick it out of the air, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then just carry it. But like when they get back onto Earth, there's clips of, yeah, like they'll just be like doing something with a pen and then they'll just like let drop go it. of it. Just... <laughs> and That's amazing. Th yeah, and it will drop. <laughs> but then. They but just looks, must thing... look so rude. <laughs> just, yeah. just, I don't need this. Uh, drop it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's so... but, then, but then the whole thing about throwing up all over everywhere. Mm hmm. If you throw up, won't it just float? Uh oh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it would. It'd be like a, like a ball. Well, I guess it'd be like a stream. It would, yeah. I don't Indirection know. Indirection as well. Uh, then, yeah. Major Peak, if you're still listening, if you could write in and tell us what sick please is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, please explain to us the physics of. Yeah vomit in space because obviously cause... we've all seen them like messing around with like water right so yeah it's like a little blob yeah. and you can just like suck it up so is, yeah is, is sick in space the opposite of that yeah because surely while it's floating around in like the book you could like i don't know get like a carrier bag and like yeah i'm just thinking because and... of obviously the force with which it comes out does that mean it's just going to be loads of blobs going everywhere rather than like one uh... You need like you a know, net to catch it. Go on, James. Sorry. I think this is him because he has done <laughs> PR oh, work for B and Q. You sorry. are you are kidding me. I just googled <laughs> Fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> B and Q. <laughs> right. Well, that makes sense. Um, it's, def it's definitely him. Then it's that's definitely like. Him. Yeah. And also, and also, if we're talking about you know space physics. Mm -hmm. You should probably take the word of someone who's actually been there over me, who's just watched some TikToks. <laughs> Space TikTok. I think it's a completely so... legitimate source of information. I wouldn't ever, wouldn't ever question that. That's it for feedback. Um, if you want to leave us feedback, go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs. James, what's going on in the world? All sorts. All sorts of cool. it's going, <laughs> go on. It's going on. I mean, I've seen the first story and I cannot wait to discuss this. I mean, I saw this story and I thought this has got to be the lead. Like, this has got to be the lead story for this. So um, Phil Harrison has left Google. Um, so we know this because he's updated his LinkedIn profile. Oh, good. And he says that he's not at Google anymore, <laughs> but he hasn't said where he's going next. Uh, so but the, this is the weird thing, though, right? Because... Business Insider said that he'd left in January, mm -hmm. but his LinkedIn says that it was in April. So there's something, yeah, something, something going on there. Yeah. Blimey. Maybe maybe he just didn't change the date. Maybe he's, maybe Phil's not very good at LinkedIn and didn't realise that you could actually change the date of when you've left to like backdate it. I mean, if he was good at LinkedIn, it'd be the first thing he's provably good at. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> or he could just be on gardening leave for three months and that ties up. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's the most reasonable explanation. <laughs> or he could, or he, or he could just not give a shit, and he'll be Maybe. like April, January, April. Yeah, who cares? Time is meaningless to Phil I mean, Harrison. Yeah, where is he also, going next? That's the thing, and it's got to be something to do with crypto or NFTs, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, no. Well, good because he'll bring it down from the inside. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's already. I'd, I'd say. I'd say it's already fallen pretty badly. True. Yeah, because what what Phil Harrison does is he only joins companies that like all they really need to do is just kind of keep ticking over and just make the obvious choices and they'll probably succeed. And he somehow manages to get that wrong, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so for those, I don't know if I've have we talked about Phil Harrison much on the show before. We probably have. We've mentioned him, yeah. It's you know I don't know him, but I kind of despise him because he kind of typifies. <laughs> <laughs> like everything he works on turns to shit, right? During that's, his I don't think during that's his time, fair. he was at, he was at PlayStation for sixteen years, and there was the ducks and all sorts <laughs> during that time. Yeah, but sales wise, <laughs> PS3, yeah, right. I I can I kind of just see him as 
someone who goes into companies mm-hmm. and just kind of exists there for a bit. Yeah. And then leaves. But because, coincidentally, yeah, say, like, he's always there when things start to go worse. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. I Xbox think, I One. Think he's, I think he's <laughs> just... Because, you know, yeah, even when whether things are going, like, well, mm-hmm. or if they're going badly, that's never down to, like, just one person. Mm-hmm. So, and the but fact he that is he always has been there com- when it yeah. goes wrong. So, in the I case guess. of Xbox One, you're, what you're saying there is you're saying that was Matrick and him combined. Yes. <laughs> what, what, what. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, and then he think- went. I mean, he obviously, he did. I think he, he didn't he have a stint at Atari. Um, yes. and they, yeah, yeah, when they were publishing stuff, um, yeah. they did that Alone in the Dark remake that no one liked. Mm. Um, and yeah, and then, and then he was at Stadia, and we know how that played out it just it, it just winds me up because he it seems like he's one of those figures who just goes from failure to failure to failure and just keeps getting hired by yeah. people and it winds me up really badly <laughs> i got a question do you think he's actually headhunted by these companies or he's applying because someone in recruitment must see his application come through and be like he's got a bad threat record whereas if he's being headhunted yeah. someone is probably trying to sabotage their own company <laughs> from the inside. So it's one of the two. Someone should see it come in and listen to their community managers and be like, ah, this is this guy's bad news. Yeah, because when you're... Just in touch. Or, or he's got dirt <laughs> on people. That would make a lot of sense. Oh, jeez. He's got one. a network of, of spies. I mean, when you're, at, when you're at, like, Phil Harrison level, career-wise... Yeah, like how how do you apply for a job? You don't see it on read, do you? <laughs> no, 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 no. Look, we already know that he's using LinkedIn. Maybe you saw it on there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I just I can't imagine someone at his level being like, "Oh man, I need to update my CV now." <laughs> Opening like Word and be like, "Oh, try change that." Left stage. Left stage. You're in January, <laughs> April. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what did tries, I do? What, tries, what? tries moving. Tries like moving things down a bit to add in a couple <laughs> new lines of like whatever he's doing now and it just breaks the formatting of the entire thing so then he just has to start again and just copying yeah. and pasting everything over or does, or does he have like does he have and a then, he up, then, he up, then he uploads it and then he's got to fill out all the information again <laughs> he tries to save it as a pdf and it fucks up all the formatting again and it just <laughs> then he yeah, realizes like, he should have used tables to uh, to organize everything that's true so neat. yeah no, yeah, no, that is. Yeah. I, I, I started doing that very recently, and I will mm. never, never do another no, CV without them. <laughs> I know what's happened. He's been at Google all this time. He hasn't got Microsoft Office anymore. He's been using Google Docs, but he forgot his CV is in Word format, <laughs> and he's tried to upload it, and it's just an absolute mess. He's going or, to be at this for ages. Or it's all saved in his work <laughs> Google account. Which it's no it's longer has saved access in his to. work Google Drive yeah. that he can't get into anymore. <laughs> I can just oh, picture him no. uploading one of those uh, Twitter updates to your bios, like deleting where you asked were. <laughs> and then a new everyone in the newcomers getting anxiety, like, please mm-hmm. don't put my company name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, best of luck to him, I guess. Um I mean, it's no surprise that he's left, right? Well, no, there's um, nothing left to, to be the head of anymore, <laughs> no, is there? No, there isn't. Yeah, but, but so what has he been doing? Been well, this is it. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, because, sorry, time has basically just turned into mush. <laughs> Stadia, Stadia shut down in January, didn't it? Yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, right, For some okay, reason, so I thought it's been sense. shut down way longer. Yeah, and he's only... It's felt like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the next story? Too soon. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie has done very well mm. at the box office, and uh, so according to Hollywood Reporter, uh, it's made 195 million in its first five day opening period in the US, mm-hmm. and it's the second best launch of all time for an animated film in the US, uh, behind The Incredibles two. Oh, yeah. Wow. Blimey, The Incredibles two. That was the. Yeah. It what did very a strange well in the US. watermark. All right, fine. Um, I mean, should we get into it, James? We could. I mean, see, we see. I went to see this, and I'd read all like the the reviews, mm. which are obviously not 
very glowing. Mm. But then, as this article says, this is from Video Games Chronicle, like did you see? They said like the like amongst professional critics, it's got like fifty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. But then, according to people that have you know have gone to see it, it's at ninety six percent. You know, like sort of approval rating. So there is like a bit of a division there between yeah. that and I don't know. But um, I mean, yeah, so, I mean Sarah and we Sean, seen have it? you seen it? Not yet. The That's only right. the only film this it seems like every couple of weeks something new that I really want to see at the cinema is coming out and the only thing I've actually gone to see is John Wick. Oh, Fair I enough. I want to see that. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, so good. I, I saw it on uh, Wednesday at launch over here. Um, How did you? Because a big part of it for James and I is that we saw it with our kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was a big source of enjoyment. And yep. I, but I wasn't sure how it would play without a child being there. <laughs> I, I saw your tweet about mm-hmm. it's greater if you have kids. Yep. Um, so I went with my good friend and his two kids and the cinema was okay. completely filled with families. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to agree with your point, Sean, mm-hmm. as well as I saw Matt point out something similar. I just came from, so as Sarah mentioned, it's something every two weeks. So I came from mm-hmm. seeing John Wick 4, which was mind blowing. Mm-hmm. And then the Dungeons and Dragons film, which was also amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but this film, um, it's definitely for kids. Like I, I mm. think, as adults, the writing could have been tighter. It was, yeah. it was scary how many times the word "Mamma Mia" was <laughs> mentioned <laughs> in it. I was like, this it's very good for fan service. It was wonderful. It was the most beautiful film I've seen in a long time, mm-hmm. and the music was probably my my highlight. Yep. But yeah, um, yeah, I, it, it didn't do it. It didn't do it. It didn't. I don't know. I think it. I don't. I think the reason why I didn't enjoy it as much as I could have is because it probably wasn't aimed for someone like me. Mm. Um, I got all of the references. It was lovely. It was beautiful. But coming back from coming off the previous two films I saw, mm. um, I just wished that the story was that you know even if it had any more innuendo or just you know how was Shrek had, mm-hmm. yeah, had yeah, yeah something for adults and then stuff for the mm-hmm. kids like the perfect balance yeah. Um, and it, it <laughs> as an origins kind of film, mm. I don't think I really needed that as a Mario film. I mean, mm-hmm. it's still beautiful. And I, out of the three films, that was probably not my my cup of tea. But mm. you know, it was fun, and the kids they all loved it anyway. So mm. it goes to show maybe it was for the younger audience. There, it's yeah. Like the thing that bothers me is yeah, like a lot of you know, a lot of the response to the criticism has been like yeah, but it's a kids' film, and it's like yeah, but Kids' films are really good now that, and have been the, for yeah. like ten years, like think, at least. Like, <laughs> I think ever since I think ever since the Lego Movie, yes, mm, yeah, 100%. I think that was, yeah, I'd say that was probably the first sort of yeah, kids' film based mm-hmm. on you know another thing mm-hmm. that shouldn't have worked. Yeah, like it's a film about toys but not only is it funny but it actually has like something to say there is a message that is relevant to kids and adults it's like you know the the whole thing about like don't be a dick about building everything properly and keeping it pristine and all that stuff but you know and it's like it's like directly critical of like the way lego's gone in in the last few decades right um so yeah so and, and in comparison to something like super mario brothers movie it like it just felt quite flat for me it was just it was a series of things that i enjoyed looking at and hearing but it said nothing like it yeah, was, was sorry there was absolutely there was absolutely no hook really to this film like yeah. i would say you know yeah. anything that would and as you said there are children's films can be significantly better than this mm-hmm. like they really they really yeah it's, it's mm. missing it was missing a lot like in, yeah. in in terms of you know character and plotting and all that kind of stuff mm. But I mean, I did. I enjoyed watching it because mm. it was fun to see, you know, all the characters in those sort of, you know, in the mm-hmm. environments that we've all seen and everything. Mm. But yeah, it, it to me, it felt like watching, you know, like the the opening cutscenes that you get from like the 3D Mario games, like Mario yeah. Galaxy and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it yeah. felt like an elongated version of that. Of like, it's <laughs> like you know, like imagine you're not going to play this and mm. we're just going to watch what's happening. That's what you're getting. Mm. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that because those cutscenes are often pretty good. You know, mm. they, they often like reasonably funny, but this wasn't 
I wouldn't say this was particularly funny either, but it was it was mm. it was completely fine and inoffensive. <laughs> is, what, is what I would say about the film. And yeah. and as I said, the kids loved it. They thought it was brilliant. You know, mm-hmm. they and but Chen loved it as well. And because mm-hmm. she was watching it and just going, she like getting all the references and stuff like that. You know, mm-hmm. and you know she she dug it for that reason. But yeah. you know, I don't know. I, I mean, they could have done more with it, but yeah. I think they just played it incredibly safe. And yeah. going from the first Mario film, you can kind of make <laughs> I mean, see why. Well, because this, this is the, the other interesting point, isn't it? Is that there's the, we've now embarked on this this weird sort of reappraisal uh, of the Bob yeah. Hoskins one, <laughs> which I mean, to be fair, like I'd seen people doing this like a year or two ago, yeah, being like you know if, if you detach from like what you would want to expect from a Mario movie, like there are interesting things about the Bob Hoskins see, one, but but on, this is the point I was going to make because yeah. the thing about this, right, is that yes, I would. I am one of those people that would say that the mm. first Super Mario Brothers film mm. is an interesting film. Mm-hmm. Now that does not mean it's a good film <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. It's a terrible film, mm-hmm. but it's interesting that they tried to interpret <laughs> it in the way that they did. Yeah, I think there's something to be said about that, but that doesn't make it good and it doesn't make it worth reappraising. I don't think particularly. Yeah, like I think it's, it's like it, it's still shit. I think it's interesting in that, like, looking at the Bob Hoskins one now in comparison to the one we've just got, it's like you can now look at the Bob Hoskins one and, and be like, oh, this was like a weird departure from the norm. Whereas actually, it's like, no, that was the only Mario Brothers film for like 25 yeah. years or whatever. Like, this was the Mario Brothers film for so mm-hmm. long. And it it didn't exist as like a a weird quirky counterpart to like a main thing. It was no, the only thing. No, it did to a degree though, because there were a whole bunch of like cartoons as well during that time. That, that, yeah, like Mario, I guess. That Mario cartoons yeah, yeah. that were much more sort of standard. Like you know, I mean, they were mm-hmm. awful as well, mm-hmm. but they were still just generally more like uh, you know, like Mario. Yeah. You know, than uh, than that film was. Yeah, yeah. But like you you know, you watch that film, and it is interesting to think like how did you get from like. <laughs> this to yeah. this yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? for that that's what's that's what's fascinating but as i said mm. that doesn't make it good though no it's just no it's just uh... and yeah and like although i have negative things to say about the new film the fact that like some reviews are like oh it'll have you wishing you were watching the bob hoskins one instead no, that's bullshit. Nah, come on <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah i mean I, like I say uh, same as you james like we did have a good time like isaac loved it um like literally it's like we came out of the screen he was just like shouting at people in the lobby that we just saw the mario brothers movie and it was amazing Aww. and then he saw a john wick 4 poster and started laughing at him because he's holding his gun upside down um <laughs> it was like yeah five-year-old taking the piss out of john wick that's a good move see asher um, came out and saw that and was like can we go and see that next and i was <laughs> absolutely I was like, not <laughs> he said about five or six times this week can i watch john wick and i'm like no <laughs> you can't Absolutely, oh, not. probably traumatizing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was, what's the worry about showing? Because how old's Asher now? Is he like ten? He's ten. He's, yeah, 10. he's ten. Is it is the well, worry that he will find it traumatizing, or that it'll fi- he'll think it's really cool? I think and it's <laughs> more of the worry that he'll think it's really cool. Okay. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> well, actually, um, does Asher play Fortnite? Because John Wick appears in Fortnite as a skin, so I'm just wondering oh, yeah. where he probably got that inspiration. I mean, the poster, but John Wick is in Fortnite, and mm-hmm. you know kids mm. no he, he doesn't i mean he's he's installed it and tried it a couple of times but he's i mean i, I said on the show like one time he's, he just said like i don't want to play this because i don't want to get addicted to it and so, <laughs> so he just said i'm not gonna play it which <laughs> is still really impressive yeah, yeah. Um, strange but yeah but yeah so yeah so the mario brothers movie made a load of money which it, it was always going to and i don't mean that in like a shitty way like it's it's clearly it's enjoyable to enough people that deserves to make a load of money. Um, I just, yeah, I, I do feel like we could have asked more from it. Mm. Um, and like, you know, people saying, like, oh, right, this is it now, like Mario Brothers Cinematic Universe, here we go. I'm like, no, because there's not enough to this to like spark the well, imagination, see, is there? It's not like... Well, well like that's, that's kind of what I've been thinking, like listening mm. to what you guys have been saying. Mm-hmm. And like... So so much of what people love about Mario mm-hmm. is playing the games, right? Yeah. Like, the story of Mario, mm-hmm. there's not really much of a story. Mm-hmm. 
granted in like the rpgs and yeah, you know Mario. there's a bit more of a story to it but it, mm. it's it's never anything like super emotional or super mm. hard hitting like mm. a lot of what people love about mario is actually like the just how good it feels to play mm-hmm. and the moment you kind of take that away whereas something like lego you could argue that lego's always especially like with how they put themselves across as a brand mm. they've always lent into that that it's more than just, this is just going to be the, probably the wankiest thing i've ever said <laughs> but it's more than just the like physical bricks it's you yeah. know being able to, I, it, it, it makes me think of that uh advert the like a4 size advert that they had running in like the 70s of a really kind of like tomboyish looking girl and i can't remember what the tagline was but it was kind mm-hmm. of something along the lines of you know she can be whoever she wants to be because she's playing with lego and she can mm-hmm. build whatever she wants mm-hmm. so that so easily lends itself to the story that was told in the Lego movie. Whereas yeah. like with Mario, like, oh, they gotta go defeat Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I don't I unless yeah. they did go weird and meta mm. and did something kind of fourth wall breaking y like they did in the Lego movie. Mm. I don't really know. Yeah. Well, see, that's that's what they could have done if they'd have followed like Paper Mario or something like that, because those games yeah. do do that. Like mm-hmm. they do like all the you know breaking the fourth wall and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and you know, and it's. But the trouble is, is that it wouldn't. The the character of Mario in those games is not very vocal, doesn't mm-hmm. say anything really much, and is kind of just. Uh, it's the characters around him that you're that are interesting and that you bounce off. Mm-hmm. But you see, I'd have the same problem with this. I was thinking about this if they're going to do a Zelda film, which I'm almost certainly they're going to at some point. If they treat that in the same way they've treated this, that will also be not very good, I don't think. Because mm. if no. you think of like, think of something like, um, you know, like Ocarina of Time, like you mm. think of, you know, that's, it's got a reasonable story, but it's not a an amazing, like character driven story. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's more about the journey that you're on than the, the people you meet or anything, you know, really, there's not, you know, it's not very, very engaging. So mm. that's what worries me about this, is they're just going to continue adapting them in such a sort of... Mm basic way that's mm. uh that's a problem i mean even if you yeah. take something like metroid which which could be fantastic for like you know mm. some for like a, a film experience because of the you know the atmosphere and all that kind of thing again there's not much there really mm. you'd have to build off it yeah um i mean so with with zelda the the problem the problem for me personally with zelda is i think you can still find it on youtube someone did um ocarina of time if it was made by ghibli and it's essentially okay. the opening like the when you first load the game up, before it cuts to like the press start screen, um, basically someone made that entire little section in the style of like a Studio Ghibli anime, and it's one of mm. the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Cool. And if the film, if a Zelda film is made and it's not that, it's it's going to be terrible. <laughs> um, like, yeah, basically a full version of that short film is the only way I would be happy with. Mm-hmm. a zelda film i do think though with metroid i think that could work even like the silent protagonist <clears throat> excuse me because like we just mentioned about like john wick mm-hmm. how many lines does he actually mm-hmm. have That's a good in point. the new film in yeah, all yeah, the yeah. films yeah. like he has so few lines so that could kind of work if you just went real heavy on the atmosphere and the tension and then break it up with some really, really, really cool uh, sort of action and fight scenes mm. where she's blasting loads of aliens and stuff. I think that could work mm. if you had the right team behind it. But yeah, Zelda, I would be happy if that was never made into a film. <laughs> it will be. Uh, but, I, mean, <laughs> I know. You could, I know. I mean, like lots of like <laughs> with Metroid, you're right though. Like if you had lots of like visual storytelling as well, like rather mm. than having to have characters explaining things, it yeah. could it could work. Which again, but, um, and which again would be fitting with the games as well. Not that they're, yeah. I mean, they're not like Dark Souls, right? They're not like mm. full of like lore and and little you know clues and stuff. But yeah, it's about the the experience of it and the yeah, like I say, there's the very little explicit story. Mm-hmm but it's just the the feeling you get from it, the weird sort of isolation and exploration of it and stuff. I don't know. 
Okay, should we move on? Yes. Because Miyamoto doesn't like making mobile games. Does he not? No. He's not He's not a huge fan. Okay. Uh, so he he was speaking, uh, to, I think it was to Variety uh, earlier in the week, or last week, uh, and he was talking about the difficulties they had in creating uh, Mario Run. You know, as, mm-hmm. you know this, this, And so he said... Um, He said, uh, it's challenging to determine what a Mario game for mobile should be. Mm. And he said this is primarily, obviously, because of the difference in controls between console and mobile games. But he said, the intuitiveness of the control is part of the gaming experience. That is why I played the role of director for Super Mario Run. To be able to translate that Nintendo hardware experience of a far more complex system like the Switch to a more generic mobile phone. We try to define what is the gameplay, what is the method, and define what devices we go on. And And he also said that basically mobile is not is never well. Is very unlikely to be a primary focus for Mario games like going forward. It does feel like this was something where he was told you've got to make a mobile <laughs> game. It was just like I don't want to. And, but yeah. I still thought it was quite good. Mario Run. I had a good time with it when it first came out. I was run the one that had one button, which was just jump. Yes. That was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was Mario Run. Um, I, yeah, I never really got into it. Um. I can't even remember why. I, just, I don't know. wasn't wasn't particularly fussed about it. Well, it was. Wasn't it just? Wasn't it just Temple Run, but Mario, and also not as good as Temple Run. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was Temple Runish, right? It, it was. It was like it was. It was a two D Mario game, but yeah, all you could do is yeah. He he would also run from left to right, and yeah, and then oh. you, you would jump. Um, wasn't it? Wouldn't that sounds like it? Jetpack Joyride. That sort of. Yeah, um, like but there were cannonball or something like that. You know, it was yeah, yeah. Um, but it also but the... not as good as any of those other. Games. Well, this is it, and like the the Rayman mobile one as well did a similar yeah, thing. Yeah, which was that excellent. Was, that was really good. Yeah, yeah, that felt more inventive. It felt like the levels were were much bigger, and there was like different routes depending on like whether you nailed the timing in certain sections and stuff. I felt like that worked really well in comparison to Super Mario Run. Um, yeah, and I mean, you know, with Mario Kart as well, you know, with them drip feeding new tracks, you can spot the ones from the mobile game a mile off because they're just not as interesting. They try and like, I don't know, they're just not as fun to race on in general. Um, And it's like they try and make up for that with the fact that, you know, like there's loads of routes where like there's like loads of pathways that cross over each other with each other. So they'll be like by sort of lap three some like you know carts are being rooted through like in one direction while some some are still driving in the other direction and it, i don't know like it's when it first happens you're like oh wow that's really cool and then after a bit just, i don't know it's just sort of meaningless or confusing or rubbish mm. so it's yeah I, like i when they announced that some of those tracks were going to be in mario kart 8 i was like cool because i've never really played the mobile one because i tried it for a bit and didn't like it but fine if those tracks are getting like a new lease of life in a game that i do like but yeah even now i'm like oh god it's one of the mobile ones mm. <laughs> do, do you think the mario, the mario run is like a reaction to other games coming out on mobile so wasn't there like an animal crossing mm. game like that and you know i think that came if... later didn't it yeah yeah, yeah animal later. crossing it was Pocket Camp came after Mario because they they yeah. signed that deal with was it with DNA like the the company yes and right. to produce like a whole bunch of mobile games that were for because I think it was one of those things where this is when the Switch was it had started doing well and they were talking about like how they're going to expand you know how mm. we're going to get more people in mm-hmm. and mobile was supposed to be the way that they were going to do that mm. like the I think the idea was like you know we put some of these smaller games out and it'll attract people to Nintendo properties mm. or whatever and then they'll buy switches mm-hmm. but it turns out people just buy switches anyway because they're great yeah. and or and people like me buy eight or nine of them you know like mm. over the time but um it seems that they've lost interest now like in in the mobile stuff because they've still got i mean Mario Kart's still running yeah Mm-hmm. And Pocket Camp definitely makes, I'm sure, makes them a ton of cash mm-hmm. more than uh, than New Horizons did because yeah, they yeah. keep releasing updates for it all the time, mm-hmm. even though they've like binned off um, you know, New Horizons now, which is a shame. Mm. Um, but yeah, they in general though they don't seem that. Fun. They oh, there was that Pikmin wasn't one that came out recently, Sean? Yes. Um... Was that? Wasn't that Niantic? It was. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. It's all right. Um, I ended up going back to Pokemon Go um, just because there's like 900 Pokemon and only like six types of Pikmin. Um, <laughs> kind of. 
like the way they sort of tried to get around it was there's like there's different um like decorations they can be wearing like hats or whatever um nice. depending on like where you found them but you'd need to like go to other places to really make use of that um mm. i work from home i don't go out a lot um, so like pokemon go get, gives me like a much more greater variation of stuff to do and things to catch or find whatever in a like in my town where i live whereas with pikmin you would see like repeats just constantly um like oh it's another pikmin who's got a flower in its head because i found it in a you know park or something rubbish bin. or rubbish yeah though you find ones with, <laughs> with rubbish on them because you found them just like on the street or whatever uh, <laughs> but yeah i don't know I, it, it was quite cool for a bit and then but yeah do you ever get like a program. pikmin with like dog shit on it and stuff <laughs> no dog shit sadly <laughs> or, or like um, or like a pikmin that's got like gammy feet and like half its toes oh, missing <laughs> no okay anyway <laughs> uh, so yeah didn't didn't get on with the pikmin one long term i'm interested to see what niantic do next though i mean if anything right because feels like nothing can topple pokemon go like we apart had... from apart from pokemon go yeah because the the community is not happy yes at the true. moment yeah um, but they never are though right that's just their thing. I think they're always <laughs> generally moaning are. about something. Um, I mean, I know they, it was like a few months ago they did another like Pokemon Go Fest, which was like one of the real life everyone actually gather in a park and do the event, and then turns out no one can connect to anything because it overloads the mobile networks and the local Wi-Fi, and it's just a fucking mess. They're still getting that wrong, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, bizarre. Um, but yeah, like yeah, there was the Minecraft one as well, and that died. Um, like if you can't get a Minecraft yeah. one off the ground, there was a there was a Harry Potter one as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That, oh, that's still that's yeah that's Niantic as well, right? Oh, I th- maybe. Think that it was is. Portkey. No. Well, no. We did Niantic do a, a Jurassic World one as well? Did they? Oh, there God, was. Right, okay. There was also yeah. one for The Witcher. Was there? I think. Blimey. There was a Witcher mobile game coming out, and yeah. I swear it was. Was it like Geralt just running left to right and you pressed the A button to <laughs> jump? <laughs> <laughs> I um, <laughs> sorry, Grey Dragon Claw in the oh, chat is it, saying uh, there's a Ghostbusters one as well. I what? need to play more of these because these sound really good. <laughs> well, the Witch, the Witcher one was mm. shut down. Uh, okay. On December sixth, twenty twenty two, and was bollocks. only going for two years. Oh, two years. Shit. Oh well. Yeah, which means it <laughs> launched yeah. in twenty twenty. Yeah, that's an Why interesting would you move, it? isn't it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Why like would the... you? Launch... You just keep hang on to it. Yeah, like because the, like... the thing with Pokemon Go is that like they did adapt loads of things to accommodate for lockdown, and then you know people slowly being allowed out again. Um, but yeah, to actually launch one of these in mm. 2020 seems. Oh, bad. apparently it was it was it was announced in August 2020 and came out in okay. July 2021. Okay. Oh. Wow. Oh, so bad, right? So basically, like a year and a half before they killed it. God, what a shame. Um. So yeah, it's it non. It feels like a lot of these don't really stick around. Because um, I think I think Pokemon. The whole, the whole going out and looking for things like mm. po- Pokemon, maybe, funnily enough, I'd say Pikmin and Pokemon really are the only ones that actually suit that style of gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's like po- Pokemon Go perfectly captures, like it's, mm. it's what everyone dreamed of doing when you played the Pokemon games as a kid is yeah, being able to go yeah. out in and go out and explore. Yeah, it's what you and, do in the games, and, right? It's, yeah. 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 But <laughs> how does that fit The Witcher mm-hmm. or Harry Potter? It mm-hmm. doesn't at all, so those mm-hmm. games just completely failed. Yeah. yeah, it's because people know what those games what, you know, what the properties mean and so they're just hoping <laughs> that there'll be some buy-in you know, based on that. <laughs> But it doesn't happen. Um, shall I move on to the next one, yeah? Yeah. Go on. So, there could be a new PlayStation handheld. 
Um, so this is according to Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming. Oh, well, it's definitely true. And, that. <laughs> I mean, why would they call it that if they didn't have... Sorry, go exactly. On. If they didn't have any, you know, all sorts of insider connections uh-huh. and, you know, they didn't know what was going on. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, anyway, so they're saying that this is going to be a portable console that lets you play games natively. Hang on, that doesn't make any sense. No, it's not if native it, supposed... at all, is it? If no, it's, streaming, it's remote then... play. Yeah. But apparently it's the it's, it's, kind of, it's going to be called the Q Lite. And yeah. it's designed primarily to work with remote play feature on the PlayStation 5 and stream games from the console over the internet. So basically it's just re- it's a remote play console, it seems. Mm-hmm. And you can use it outside the home, obviously, but with you know with Wi-Fi only. And they like Insider Gaming specifically says this is not for like cloud streaming. This is primarily for like remote play, as in like connecting into your PS5. Right, you know, directly like, and, to and, yeah, to your PS5 rather way. than yeah, okay. And it'll apparently have an 8-inch LCD touchscreen for 60fps gaming at 1080p, adaptive triggers like on the DualSense, etc. Right. And apparently it's going to come in late 2024. That was the the uh, the, the rumor. And uh, yeah, but there you go. I mean, this this to me, I can understand. I, I can see this being true, and this being something which is maybe going to happen. I don't really understand the use case for this. If if it had mm. like a cloud, if they if they had a, a functioning cloud gaming system that worked on something other than a PC and the PS5, mm. it would make more sense to me because then you could like you know use it to play you know stuff like wherever whenever. Well, but I was if it's say because obviously yeah there there are already like cloud handhelds right that will tap yeah. into loads of different services. I think all the ones I've seen are hideously overpriced for what they are. But yeah. I can un- I can see the point. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a device that's like no it works for this one, well not even one service, like one piece of hardware that you have to have in your house. I, I, I can see this. why people would use it. I just think that's too restrictive to buy a device for. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Yeah, because I mean, surely like five, unless it's got, unless it takes a SIM card, mm-hmm. and you can connect it to five G. But even, but even then, even, is that, even, is that even, ever going to be a, like a good experience to use it? No. Though? Well, no. That, yeah, that's the thing. I'm, well, to be, to be honest, I'm 5G. So when in my in my old house, mm-hmm. not where I am now, mm-hmm. um, in my old house, our entire internet connection was just a 5G oh, that's hub. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could get, like, I, I could stream, I could live stream to YouTube playing Stadia. Like, right. that's how good it was. Okay. Um. And so I think that would be completely fine. But then mm. it's like, even if it doesn't come with it, it's fine. Just tether it to your phone. Mm-hmm. But unless you have like reliable 5G, yeah, surely it's going to play like ass because mm-hmm. we all know we all know how bad, how bad public Wi-Fi is. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah, it's just going to be terrible. So mm. I feel like the only way it's going to play really well is in your house. Where yeah. your PlayStation Five is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then there there is a use case for that though, because I mean I I used like a Backbone controller with yeah, my yeah. phone quite yeah. frequently. Yeah. Um, yeah. when the when the kids or whatever are using the TV and I want to play some games, then I use it for that. There is there is yes. a use case for it. Oh but yeah. Also, even like even in your own home, the connection is still not perfect mm. for this. Mm. It's still mm. you still. I mean, every single time that I play. Usually about every I don't know forty five minutes or whatever you'll get the oh the connection's got a problem like thing, and it it only get like stuttering for like a few seconds, but it's enough that you're just like oh that's that's a bit, bit irritating, but it doesn't really mm. matter that much. Mm-hmm. But then like you said like with the like if you're using five G if if this had like you know a way that you could connect it with five G, that's great if you're in a single location and you're not moving about. But if you're on a train for example and you're mm-hmm. trying to use there's no way that that's going to work you know yeah. it's, yeah. it's yeah. or like using like train wi-fi or whatever like that if the trains are running you know it's um you know it's it's not it's not that great for that kind of and it's bit, um, we, we should just things. say james that was a dig at german trains being rubbish not the strikes right <laughs> it was yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it was it was yeah it was that was a specifically yeah. deutsche bahn okay. uh, related um yeah, thing. <laughs> but anyway. and the, the whole i'm just gonna shift a little bit um i mean the whole the whole the whole sort of use case of using it at home like if you know if someone else wants the tv or whatever mm-hmm. to be honest i because also as well as I've, i mean i've seen i've seen the leaks and i've seen the look of it and it 
you know, it looks like a dual sense controller that someone split in two and spread mm. open and whacked a screen in the middle. It look if that is what it's gonna look like, it looks really nice. Mm-hmm. And I mean I I do like the idea of having that sort of dedicated handheld that I can just pick up and carry on playing what I would have been playing on PS5. Like that's really cool. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if the price was right, That's the, I would yeah. be interested yeah. just to have it in my house for when, you know, someone someone else wants to watch something on TV mm-hmm. or play something on Xbox or whatever. <clears throat> but so for you... me, for me, the price for that, yeah, and like I say, it's got to be a, like we're talking like a hundred pound. Yeah, and, the, and this is what has baffled me is that. Um, yeah, you know, like that, the Logitech cloud handheld that's like 300 quid or something. It's like, you, you're like, yeah. yeah, you're like, you may as well get a Steam Deck, like something yeah. that actually run games itself rather than just streaming them. It's the, like the pricing has can, been wild for some of these. But. And you can sideload access to all the cloud services on the Steam Deck anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, and you see, mm-hmm. the thing is, this would make a lot more sense for me if. The fact if it was like connecting to like a PlayStation Cloud, you know, like cloud gaming kind of thing without yeah. having to use the PS5. Because, mm-hmm. you know, this it's really strange the position Sony are in with this because it reminds me a bit of Apple and how they were with the um, when the first iPods like start coming out mm. and they were like trying to connect everything of being like you need to have a Mac to use this. Yeah, like yeah. there needs you need to have like you need to be able to connect it to like a and like the, the, the Mac was like supposed to be like the Halo device kind of thing that everything mm. was like connected in through that mm-hmm. and then that was your sort of center of your world. But then they like realized over time that well that's not really how people you know live mm-hmm. you know it's it's mm-hmm. not like that and so mm-hmm. this feels similar to me you know in the sense of it's like they're basing everything around the ps5 which you know i can understand why because they're trying to push that as a as a machine but it's also not entirely convenient i think for um yeah for for remote gaming in particular mm. but i mean the even if you've got a ps5 if this handheld could play all of the cloud games that because you know you 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 don't want to always have to like download stuff onto your PS5. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. well, you know, there's certain games that are on cloud that mm-hmm. I want to just sit and chill and play on like a handheld device. Yeah, like if it if it had access to that cloud streaming stuff, that mm. instantly makes it way more interesting mm. and see, I yeah, think... way way more attractive. Even if you think... even if you've got a PS5. Mm. I think that may be coming, though. And the reason I would say that is because, I mean, recently I resubscribed to you know, the, the higher tier of PlayStation Plus that has the like the streaming option in it because I wanted to play to cheer, and it was cheaper to do that than mm-hmm. buying the game. And like the you can like a lot of like PS4 games on there you can stream now. Like you don't really have to like download them anymore. You can just stream them, but you can't do that with PS5 games yet. And I'd imagine that once that becomes available, then why would you not just allow these to be streamed from other devices as well? It's, um, yeah, and it's, it's because they just really want to push the PS5 hardware instead, which, I don't know, feels a bit bit of a shame. But mm. I guess we'll see what happens. But What's next? Oh, oh, go on. We've got another. So there's also, though, a PlayStation controller patent, <laughs> um, which has come out that is, right. that's describing... Heat changing haptic feedback. Okay. So they've registered a patent which describes the possibility of including temperature controlled haptic feedback in a PlayStation controller. So it says this feature could emulate the sense of either hot or cold to the user and is part of several discussing this patent for a controller made of a more like this sort of gel like substance rather than plastic. So this right. is the quote. It says here, <laughs> Sony describes an elastically deformable material which is able to better aid in haptic feedback and can detect when said elastic member is touched. Pressed, twisted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the what? Go on. Go on. It gets better. <laughs> when said elastic member is touched, pressed, <laughs> twisted, pinched, squashed, rubbed, or even in the action of bringing a hand close to the elastic member. Now, okay. <laughs> Say rubbed. More. Yep. There's more. Okay. You don't even it... need to touch it. Just this, the thought of <laughs> <Goes off. laughs> ne- nearly off. touching it <laughs> is enough for it. 
<laughs> if you go near it, it goes off. It says, it says, <laughs> it says the elastic member may include such a material as gel, whose elastic modules or hardness changes under heat. <laughs> To con- <laughs> oh god! Oh, <laughs> to control god. the elastic modules or hardness by changing the temperature with the above temperature control apparatus. The temperature control apparatus may be controlled such as that the larger the amount of deformation, the higher the temperature becomes. This allows the user to feel the temperature change according to the deformation. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so it, it 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 likes it when you when you treat treat it a little bit yeah. rough. It likes yeah. it if you press it, twist it, pinch it, squash it, rub it, or... In your I mean, own, in Sony, your... if you want to just make a dildo, that's fine. It's okay. I mean... You don't have to pretend it's, it's a game member, Sean. It's an see, elastic when... member. See, when you started this story, mm. I was thinking, oh, why? Because we all know that companies just come up with mad shit and patent yeah, yeah. it yeah. just yeah, in case. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. like, it's a complete non-news story. But yeah, it went direction no, but it went <laughs> directions I never thought it would. And yep. I'm so happy that you included it because <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Because I, I don't... This, this does sound fascinating though. Like I mean does it? Just, I doubt it'll I doubt it'll come to anything, <laughs> but the idea that you know that you can have something which, you know, with different like temperatures like you know, hot, cold, that kind of thing, that's kind of interesting. But you I mean, never I'm, like I'm... but you holding the controller is never analogous to like what your character is doing right but sean you haven't held an elastic member yet i haven't (laughs) to be fair i could see this more with like vr controllers where you are like so say you reach out and pick up like a hot coal or something and then then suddenly it gets hot like Mm. i can see that but i mean i still I i can't think of any good uses for it but i can see why immersion wise that could be potentially interesting but with a, a typical controller i don't know if that works because you're never miming you like picking something up with that right with this you can mime pinching or rubbing something <laughs> you could yeah we'd have to mime it just go for it um, and the and the, the the hardness will change in reaction to <laughs> yeah. how much you're Deforming yeah. it. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, um, I, I just I wish I could comment. This is, this is actually insane to think about this. I, yeah. I mean, I, joking aside, let's get serious now. Um, like p- people have said for a while that like a controller that can like physically reconfigure itself would be interesting, right? Like, and it's like, or it's like modular or, or whatever. This could be a step towards that, but I can't see. It's not like it's not like it's moving the buttons around or anything, right? It's just like bits of the the controller have the fucking gel in them or whatever. <laughs> it's not like it's mean like meaningfully becoming like a different object. Do you know what I mean? We don't know that, Sean. No, it's an elastic member. It's, it's an elastic member. I mean, that's the title of the show, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, so. Next story is that Microsoft have locked down uh, game emulation on the Series X and the Series S, and so this is after so for three years it's been you can apparently freely install emulation software on mm-hmm. new Xbox consoles that are in retail mode, uh, but now Microsoft are blocking it unless you're in the paid developer mode instead. So if you try which, and which launch... is like a tenner, right? I don't think yeah, it's probably. expensive because I remember this was when emulation first came to the console i think you had to be a developer and everyone's just like yeah yeah just pay 10 quid and, and you're in don't worry about it but then yeah they became available for everyone so what you're saying sean is if you want to do piracy you just want to you know just just pay 10 quid and then, yep. you, then you're in yeah you don't have, to, you don't have to pay for any <laughs> games ever again it's like game pass um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. So if you try and launch any of these games or apps, then now it just says the game or app you're trying to launch violates Microsoft's store policy and is not supported. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there was a... So this was on, on The Verge. They talked to somebody called um, Aliana, who was an active emulator like sort of fan. on, And she said that she'd spoken to a Azure developer who said that this was because of um, issues with Nintendo, basically. That okay. Nintendo had like tried to pressure Microsoft into doing this because obviously there's quite a lot of NES and Super NES emulators and all that kind of Nintendo thing. Nintendo really hate 
emulation. Yeah, because oh, I can't I mean, sell the same stuff again. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, Steam Deck to the rescue, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is that. Um, I mean, it's been, it's been very interesting seeing more channels like or, or more like larger outlets and, and youtube channels and stuff openly talking about like you know obviously the um 3ds and the wii u stores have gone um and yeah and more people are just openly being like yeah so here's how you pirate stuff on it now because there is no legal way to buy the games anymore and i, I think it's interesting that more people are sort of waking up to that like yeah it's of course it's still illegal i just morally it's it's a grey area. Um, I think I've like in terms of preservation, like I, I think there there is a perfectly solid argument in favour of piracy. Um, but yeah, the the danger is when people are emulating more and more recent things, right, or things that you could actually still buy. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the news. Cool. Um, what we've been playing who wants to go first sarah you got loads do you want to go ahead yeah some of them some of them are kind of quick um <clears throat> i guess the most probably the most interesting one um i started playing diablo 2 remastered oh yeah which is it's 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 diablo 2 mm -hmm. but it looks way nicer mm -hmm. But it looks like I remember the game looking mm -hmm. when you because you can literally I think you just press G because like obviously I'm playing it on PC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you like hit G and it puts it back into like the original graphics mode. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, no, this game really was that ugly. Because <laughs> um, Diablo 2 super old, right? When did it come out? Yeah. Come on. <gasps> I want to say like 99. Oh, was it late night? Because I was thinking early noughties, but yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Oh, maybe between yeah. sort of, I'd say between like 99 and maybe like 2002, something mm. like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I used to play, I used to play an absolute ton of uh, Diablo 2. Um, mm. I don't know if I ever got that far mm -hmm. through it. I think I maybe got like halfway through like Act 2, mm -hmm. um, even though like I played it like an absolute ton. Mm -hmm. I was just not very good at it because it is very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, apparently they've done a lot of stuff in the background to make it a lot more um, like stable, particularly like playing it online. But right. it it really does just play exactly like you remember Diablo 2 playing, which mm -hmm. if you've played Diablo 3 since or you know the diablo 4 beta mm -hmm. you're like oh no this is bad <laughs> this is a very <laughs> this is a very good to play now um but i mean yeah graphically the what they've done with it is really cool um and yeah mm -hmm. and if you do want that kind of like authentic remaster mm -hmm. it's great mm -hmm. um but pretty much the only reason why I started playing it was because yeah I played the Diablo 4 beta I was like mm. I just want to play a lot of Diablo and I played <laughs> Diablo 3 a lot mm -hmm. so oh, and, I the, went, and the, you got right into the mobile one as well right yes yeah. I got far far too into uh, <laughs> Diablo <Immortal. laughs> and probably put more money into it than I should have because yes the it's been you know, it's been discussed a million times, but yeah, the monetization of Diablo Immortal is horrendous, mm -hmm. but the game itself is just a brilliant, brilliant adaptation of Diablo 4 mobiles. Mm -hmm. um, but Diablo 4 is, that game is going to ruin my life come June. Because <laughs> um, I, I, I play the beta as well. Um, I thought it was fine, but some, and, and this is, please tell me why I am wrong, because I definitely am. But to me, it felt like Diablo's still like the sort of base template for a very addictive RPG where the numbers go up. But I feel like that template has since been applied to things like Destiny, right? Which to me is like a like a very fun first person shooter with the cool RPG stuff on top of that. And playing Diablo four, like Diablo Diablo Four beta, I was like, this is like that base template again. But I don't 
I wasn't finding the moment to moment moment interactions with it that interesting. But maybe I just didn't play enough of it. I don't know. I mean, that's the whole numbers go up pretty lights, <laughs> numbers go up. Yeah. That's 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 why I like that's why I like those <laughs> games. That's also why I like Destiny. Um yeah, yeah it yeah, I mean, yeah, gameplay-wise, it just completely scratched the itch. It, I'm sure there are people who have put thousands and thousands of hours into all of the Diablos over the years and done, you know, silly amounts of, like, Paragon levels and ladder characters and build crafting and everything. I'm sure they will go into a ton of detail about the character classes and mm. the combat mm. and whether it's good or bad. I don't care. <laughs> it was it, it you just lots of lots of things to smash mm-hmm. and things to collect but i think what really kind of grabbed me with it was like obviously diablo 2 is very grim and dark mm-hmm. and like i said kind of ugly mm-hmm. uh diablo 4 clear no diablo 3 sorry they clearly got a little bit carried away with the sort of extra graphical power that Mm. they had to play with Mm -hmm. and it kind of got very colorful which yeah i remember people sulking when like the first screenshots came out and i was like there's fucking rainbows in it the fuck is going on yeah people got people got i think probably too salty about it yeah um but the the new one is is grim it's nasty it's it looks like graphics i was playing on ps5 Mm -hmm. um it looks incredible like some Mm -hmm. of like the lighting effects uh that are going on i mean and obviously like the areas the areas that you kind of play in the beta are it's they're very kind of snowy i think Mm. it's kind of meant to look almost kind of like sort of russia sort of area yeah um but i mean and also as well like the so there's two kind of key cut scenes that i experienced one is the opening cinematic which is available on youtube Mm -hmm. and is probably one of the most amazing things i've ever seen like Mm -hmm. there's parts where it looks photorealistic Mm -hmm. and yeah i mean obviously it's not the in-game engine it's mm. all pre-rendered cgi but yeah there are points where it looks photorealistic and some of like the visual effects like of them summoning lilith uh mm. basically these guys are like upside down and like it's their blood coming out of them but in like these tendrils and mm. it basically makes this giant like sheet of skin and lilith like comes out. it's it's horrific mm-hmm. like it's really gross and really icky but that like i love my horror <laughs> and the way yeah the way they kind of summon the lift like mm. i've never really seen anything done like that before it's just really 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 cool really inventive i mean um, yeah like and the, the, to be clear like because i i can't do horror at all but i i sat and watched the whole thing because i was <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Like, oh fuck this is just really well made like yeah yeah it's yeah. it's amazing and yeah. then there's yeah then there's a cut scene like a little bit further on where Lilith basically turns up um, at this church and mm. gets all these people in the church to uh, beat the priest to death. And it takes um, a little while, doesn't it? It's not It's not just like, oh, they yeah. hit him, he's dead. It's like, no, he's still, yeah, and, they, they yeah. really lay into him. It's <laughs> Yeah, uh, they like stomp on him a lot and mm-hmm. he gets his head bashed in with a mm-hmm. crucifix. and But like, that's all using the in-game engine and even mm. some of like the animation and like the facial animations on that are just mm. so incredibly well done. Um Lilith herself is just a really, really cool. I think I think Blizzard realized that, you know, gamers are really into like hot, tall, terrifying women <laughs> and went, Cool, here you go, here's a new one for you. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, she seems super cool. Her design's ace. Um yeah, the gameplay is smash things, smash things, get numbers, get loot that just tickles my brain in all the right ways. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's going to completely take over. Basically, I've got Tears of the Kingdom, what, beginning of May? 
Yeah. Early-ish, mate. I, yeah. I, forget- I keep forgetting the actual date, which is weird considering I keep saying, oh, I don't want to book the day off work for that. I should probably know when it's... it is, really. Mm. Or th- actually, I think it's maybe towards like the end of May. I think it's like the 23rd or something. Mm, maybe, yeah. So basically, that for two weeks, and then it's Diablo, and then it's mm. Diablo for two weeks, and then it's Final <laughs> Fantasy 16. <laughs> God, no one's going to see you for months, are they? No, just gonna... pretty much. Yeah. And I just, like, all three of those games are easily, for me, a hundred plus hours into each one mm-hmm. as a minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I kind of hate that they're all coming out at the same time. But, <laughs> um, th- which is also why the rest of the games on this list are kind of dreadful, because I'm like, I don't, I don't know what to play. There's nothing to play at the moment until all those games start coming out. Um, oh, also like Redfall at the beginning of... Oh, God, yeah. That's at the beginning soon, of May. Right? So it's like Redfall yeah. for two weeks mm-hmm. and then it's Tears of the Kingdom and then we go from there. And then Redfall's going to be a weird yeah, one, right? Because it's, yeah, mm-hmm. like I think everyone's really excited to play it, but God, it's got a short shelf life thanks to Zelda. <laughs> like, which, you know, and they shouldn't necessarily clash because they're very different types of game, but just, yeah, just everyone's going to be obsessed with Zelda for a bit. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I got a question about the Diablo Four beta. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had obviously I haven't played as much as um, you both, but one thing I've always noticed when I've played at least three and then the Re- Resurrected is that the name of number two? Remastered yeah, them, mm-hmm. is the difficulty never seems to make sense. And I remember playing Diablo three, and within the first hour, I had to keep putting the difficulty up because it just never was able to keep up as well as Mm. two i remember it being too difficult and whatever have does it seem to have at least has blizzard seem to work out their difficulty thing for at least a four beta like does it make sense to just choose a difficulty and it makes sense or do you have to keep playing with making it more difficult or Uh, i mean i i definitely found four more well the beta for four more challenging than I ever did for three. Like okay. three, you can just kind of like face roll your way through it. Mm. And yeah, like, a, but I think, I think the way they're doing it is that the difficulty to kind of just get through the game and just get to like the end of the story is never going to be super difficult. Okay. Um, the, the real challenge comes in the end game. Um, and Blizzard have, because that's the thing, Diablo 4's, almost an mmo Mm. like it's it's like this close to the line it's very very much playing with the idea of being an mmo um so yeah kind of completing the game isn't going to be that difficult i think once you've completed it once you can then kind of set the world tier which is basically their fancy word of saying difficulty because you know you can't you got you, everything everything's got to have a ridiculous name um yeah so then then you can set like the world tier higher and make it more challenging i guess you do that at end game and but then there's also going to be like world events um i th- they they put blizzard put out a full video about all of the end game stuff so it looks like that yeah like like with pretty much any other MMO ever, just getting to the end of the story is really only like the start of things. Mm. Um, but it, I mean, I when I started, obviously, when you were playing the beta, you obviously got the chart, the, there's like two choices of world tier, um, like the regular one. And then it tells you if you're used to playing Diablo, play the slightly harder one. So that was the one that I did. And I definitely found it more, I definitely found it more challenging than I ever found Diablo three, mm-hmm. um, you especially like I got to the f- kind of main boss that you fight kind of quite early on, um, and actually kind of found myself actually really having to think about dodging and using potions and also picking up potions and stuff. Um, also, in one of the dungeons, I came across the butcher who just instantly killed me, and I was like, I am not even going to try to go back and fight that guy. Mm-hmm. Also, scared the living daylights out of me. Because his health bar just popped up, and <laughs> I didn't. Because I do just explore every single inch of dungeons in those mm-hmm. games, mm-hmm. and I go off to the side, and I'm like, I know this isn't the way I'm meant to be going, but I'm exploring, and I go off to the side, and then I see the health bar for the butcher pop up, and I was like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, but he didn't pop up for a little bit, and then mm-hmm. he came 
charging out of nowhere and completely one shot me and i was like no i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna i'm gonna go the way i'm supposed to be going he can stay over there i was half (laughs) expecting him to like come out of nowhere again later on in the dungeon luckily he didn't Mm -hmm. um so i'm guessing as well yeah like there's a lot of like optional difficulty things you can go and do because he it definitely gave me the feeling that he was like the kind of optional challenge for the dungeon Mm -hmm. um so yeah if you did kind of want that extra challenge you could go and fight him but i was like no thank you (laughs) not yet Mm -hmm. yeah not yet do a load of grinding and then go back and just wipe the floor with him but um yeah it definitely feels like there is there is more of a challenge cool that's good yeah what's melva idol it's (laughs) it's <laughs> Melville Idol. <laughs> Melville Idol is RuneScape without the game. Okay. It's cool. just the numbers. <laughs> so, Amazing. yeah. So, one of the guys I work with um, used to work for Jagex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, I don't even know, he, he just came in and we were just talking about some other stuff. And he was like, do you like idle games? And I was like, I'm not going to show you the amount of hours on my Steam account for Cookie Clicker, but yes, I do like <laughs> idle games. Um, idle is in I D L E, not mm-hmm. I D O L, like yep. K pop idols, mm-hmm. not that kind of idle. Um, it's just something you can just kind of have on in the background, and then occasionally the numbers going up makes my brain feel nice. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Melvor Idol was basically just it's RuneScape, but an idle game. So okay. you can level up your wood cutting and your fishing and your cooking and your smithing and your mining. Mm-hmm. It's all the skills from Minecraft, from Minecraft, from RuneScape, <laughs> but without actually having to go into a world and move your character around. So you just mm-hmm. like I want to level up smithing. You click on the thing and then you leave it, and it levels up. Co- yeah. I d- this is what I mean by there's nothing <laughs> out yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for things, but I'll just like have it on while I'll have it on on one screen. Like I've been, mm-hmm. I've had it on quite a bit over the weekend. Like I think mm-hmm. he only told me about it on Thursday. Uh, so I've just kind of had that on one screen while I've had Jojo's Bizarre Adventure on my main screen and I've mm-hmm. been painting Warhammer. That's kind of <laughs> been my bank holiday weekend. Um, that sounds yeah. class to be fair. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's if you've if like me, you've put far too much time into Cookie Clicker and you've played Candy Box and it's yeah, it's decent. There's like a free version that will get you a decent chunk of skills and then you can buy like the paid version for like a tenner with the DLC, which gives like a whole bunch of extra skills. Mm-hmm. There's like combat and dungeons, um they're adding in uh Oh, they're adding in raids. So it seems like it's under like quite a bit of like active development. Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah, for the raids, it actually when you click on like the raids feature, like in the game, it has um all of the the full like development roadmap for it. So mm-hmm. it seems like Jagex actually has a decent little team working on it. Mm-hmm. Um and it also exists in browser and phone and steam and all of them have uh cloud saving so you mm. can pick it up and play it on like anything so mm. cool. yeah for for a silly little game that isn't actually really a game it's actually pretty <laughs> decent i feel like runescape's one of those things i just missed out on entirely i gather it's actually decent right i know when it first launched it was like people made fun of the graphics but but hey it runs in a web browser that's kind of interesting yeah. um but yeah like occasionally i'll just run across someone who's like oh yeah i fucking really got into runescape it's amazing yeah <laughs> yeah i because because it did run in a browser yeah it for for me in sort of early 2000s like i mm-hmm. never had a pc that was good enough to run mm-hmm. world of warcraft but i could play runescape mm-hmm. um and yeah, it's really good. Like it was, it was popular enough to the point that even though Jagex had moved on to like RuneScape three, mm-hmm. they brought back RuneScape Classic, which yeah. is I think was technically like RuneScape two, mm-hmm. um, and that all exists. And that actually does a really cool thing where any any kind of new feature coming into the game has to be is all polled by the community, and mm-hmm. changes are only ever made if it wins in a poll. Okay, basically, which yeah. is really interesting. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah yeah uh Ru- Ru- runescape is one of those games that is just kind of ticking along in the background mm-hmm. even like you it comes out and then it kind of goes away but you'd be surprised how many people are still playing it like yeah. uh mm. guild wars 2 is a big mm. one that... that's still going isn't it yeah. Like I recently just yeah, saw it was on Steam and I was like, hey, I'll add that to my library because it's free. Like I, I played it back in the day. Um, and then, yeah, and obviously now because I've added it to my library, it like comes up on my news stuff. And it's like, fuck, they're still doing like events and it's still like fully supported. Yeah. Uh, Lord of the Rings Online is yeah. another one. Mm-hmm. Um, my boyfriend recently, so his in the move, well, we don't know. It mm. worked and now it doesn't work. His... Uh, <laughs> 3080 graphics card oh, died. Wow. Oh, that's right. So, what are you saying? Yeah. Yeah. So he's had to ship it back to Poland. Oh, nice. Because e buyer were like, you've had it over a year, so it's not our problem <laughs> anymore. to do with us. Yeah. Cool. Yep. <laughs> Which is great. Um, so he's borrowing a card off of a friend mm. and he's just kind of finding anything low <laughs> intensity that this card can run. Mm-hmm. Still sounds like a freaking jet engine <laughs> half the time um oh what's the i want to say knights of the old republic but that was the single player game is it just the old republic it is, republic. Yeah, it is. the old republic yeah yeah, so, yeah. yeah. that's still getting stuff released that, for it and that still has people playing it like it's be good. It's, there's also the star trek one as well which is still going as oh, far yeah, as more yeah. yeah that's still yeah. A, that's yeah. still a going concern yeah yeah, yeah they, they, they find these audiences don't they obviously are, are like sort of that are probably you know really really into this and then mm. there's enough people there to obviously make it completely worthwhile you mm. know just like keep you know pursuing it i remember, yeah, like... i mean there's Sorry, there's entire um there's entire development studios who's in their whole thing is they essentially just buy the rights for these mmos mm-hmm. turn them free to play mm-hmm. and then just kind of keep them going mm. mm-hmm. so apparently you can do that with very little overheads like uh when echo vr got was well it was announced that was getting shut down and i think i mentioned it on the show uh john carmack did like a statement about like why like why these things happen why it's kind of stupid and and he doesn't really approve of it and stuff um i think this was after he'd left meta or was kicked out because he kept slagging it off um but yeah (laughs) he was saying he was saying like he's like we had one guy running quake live for ages (laughs) Like it's actually it's really not that hard. It's just it's finding people willing to do it because it's not really a career move, like keeping an old game on life support. Um, like no one, you know, it's it's not easy finding someone who's just like, Yeah, I'll I'll do that. Um but yeah, it's just interesting because I think you know, we always assume any online game is like this huge undertaking just to keep it ticking over. And it, it's not easy by any means, but yeah, it's apparently can be easier than you think. And and these aren't don't have any microtransactions at all, do they? Oh no, they do. Yeah, when when I say they're turned free to play, they are often turned the bad free to play. Mm. So right. you will I mean it'll it'll completely vary from game to game, but uh most of the time you'll generally have access to maybe like one or two classes for free. Um everything else is paywalled. Um, and then there are often, uh, you know, um, bundles of currency that you can buy and then you can use them for things like, uh, faster, faster travel, more bag space, more bank space. Um, uh, some games are fully just pay to win at this point mm-hmm. where you can just buy, you know, things which give you double, triple experience, um, Things that will make you, you know, po- you can buy potions that mean you do, do more damage or mm. potions that mean that the penalties from dying are way lower. It, yeah, um, there's a really, really, really good YouTuber called Josh Strife Hayes, who pretty much primarily focuses on MMOs. And he has a series called Worst MMO Ever. <laughs> and he just picks up these almost kind of either either they're brand new mmos which are just being launched or it's he plays a lot of these yeah sort of turned free to play mmos um and he'll kind of jump into them from a new player and he'll always kind of check out the cash shop and yeah you can kind of see the extent that uh those have been 
sort of chopped up and monetized mm. by the company that's kind of taking them over. But, you know, obviously, obviously going straight play to win is like that always sucks. Mm. But, you know, for for the players who have been playing these games for such a long time, if it's if it going free to play in this way is what means that the game can carry on for mm. the community and for the players, then it's kind of yeah. kind of like a little bit of like a necessary evil, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, I can see uh, that. Yeah, yeah I always just say it's just cosmetics. It's just cosmetics. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, not in <laughs> not in, not in some of these ones. Well, there's obviously, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of like very predatory sort of like fantasies. Some, that are yes, to, you know? some some of them are some of them are really bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. they where basically for free for some of these games for free players it is just the most horrific grind Mm -hmm. to do anything i was Um, was gonna say because that that, that's the the thing right is that if they were literally taking the game and just adding the microtransactions on top of it but the game was still playable as it always was that would not be too bad but by the sounds of it they're actually making the games harder without the microtransactions right is that the pretty much yeah okay yeah yeah a lot of them a lot of them are like that Mm -hmm. um i think i think lord of the rings online is one that's actually still that's actually monetized fairly well okay um but yeah it's it's a really really interesting youtube channel yeah josh Mm strife hayes if you're Mm -hmm. interested in seeing what happens to mmos or what is happening to some MMOs that you thought was dead? Right. <laughs> cool. But yeah, other than that, Hearthstone Battlegrounds mode is brilliant, although oh, also what's, really what's frustrating. That? It's so it's obviously normal Hearthstone. Mm-hmm. You get the card packs, you mm-hmm. build a deck, mm-hmm. and then you go play one person. Mm-hmm. Battlegrounds is eight players. Oh fuck. Uh, competing to be the essentially the last person standing Mm -hmm. and the way it works is you start off and you've got you're basically given a choice the basically you go between buy phase and combat phase Mm -hmm. in the buy phase you have uh, essentially it's like the tavern keeper offers you three minions and you have three gold and basically you can buy a minion for Mm -hmm. three gold Um, and then each turn you get one more gold up to 10. Um, you can also increase the tier of minions that are being offered to you. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, each turn, the sort of tier level, the tier cost goes down, your gold goes up. And yeah, basically, it's a case of buying minions. And then when you go into like the combat phase, uh, your your minions will attack automatically from left to right. Okay. But then they will attack random targets unless the opponent or whether your side has like a taunt minion. Mm-hmm. Um, and minions are split into so into different like uh, archetypes. So it's like dragons, mechs, uh, quill boar, murlocs. I think that's all of them. Pirates. Mm-hmm. Um, they've recently added the undead uh, mm-hmm. minion class and basically. At the beginning of the game, you're presented with a different hero that you want to play as, and each hero has like a hero power. So a lot of the time, it's about synergizing which minions you're go- you're picking with what your hero power is, and right. like certain hero powers will synergize with better with different minion types. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, basically in each combat phase, you're obviously paired up against one other player out mm-hmm. of the eight. Um, obviously everything's co- there is so much RNG involved from mm. the heroes you're given at the beginning to what minions appear for you each turn mm. to who you get paired up against to go to like fight against um, so sometimes it's really frustrating uh, sometimes mm. you'll get paired up against a player who for some reason who has clearly had the best luck and been given the minions that they wanted every single buy phase mm. and they just absolutely stomp you into the ground um whereas you're sat there for an entire turn just like refreshing the tavern and not getting anything you need um but yeah i i've been playing i've been playing it I, I normally play at least like a couple games a day mm-hmm. daily for mm-hmm. about the past five five maybe nearly six months mm-hmm. 
and it's yeah it's i don't want to say it's good because sometimes <laughs> it's really frustrating because yeah, yeah it is just so rng heavy and mm. there are uh, pretty much every pretty much every minion type has a very meta way to play it mm. that if you're not playing it that way then you're kind of screwed um but yeah it's just it's just really it is just really really satisfying i mean mm. yeah like the rng comes into the effect where you know i played like two games yesterday lunchtime and i came like seventh mm. and then i came first right <laughs> so yeah it's it's all but i think because it is so rng heavy if i lose i'm like well i just didn't the rng doesn't just really wasn't on my side that time it doesn't say, really matter. sounds kind of like my experience of marvel snap right and that yeah. some matches are just so ridiculous the stuff it throws at you they're just like well i don't, don't really care that i lost because a it only took three minutes and b it, like the way i lost was interesting at least like even if there was nothing i could have done about it um i don't know i don't know if it's a similar thing but yeah. i mean definitely not the three minutes i mean a game yes. of battlegrounds <laughs> can take you if you're doing well mm -hmm. and if you want to finish in like the top three mm -hmm. uh you're looking at close to half an hour for oh, one right. game wow shit yeah okay. it's long mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's one of those ones where it's like you'll be approaching like the half hour mark and you'll be like oh i'm actually doing really well like i'm mm -hmm. into like the top three there's maybe mm -hmm. yeah like three or four people left mm -hmm. and you're like oh but i've really got this thing to go and do <laughs> but yeah the 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 better you do, the longer the game goes on for, and mm. you're just like, oh, I really need, I need this to end. I kind of actually <laughs> want to get kicked, knocked out at this point, so I can go do the thing that I should be doing. I mean, I suppose um, as long as you go in knowing how long like a good run could take, right? And you've yeah. budgeted for that. Yeah, okay, essentially. But, yeah, yeah. Gem generally, it's around like the half hour mm. mark. Um, mm. But yeah, I really enjoy it, and it means, I mean you know regular hearthstone like the whole mm. deck building side i think that's got its issues as well again yeah. unless you're playing like the meta mm -hmm. decks mm -hmm. you might as well not even bother i think mm -hmm. it's got quite a bad uh botting problem as well oh, really? um, yeah it's a shame because i got the yeah. I, I know you got it as well where, where you just got an email it's like oh here's like 80 card packs Oh, it was 150. It was how many? Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. may, maybe I only got 80. I can't remember. But yeah, I got, I got the email. And I was like, oh, shit, I should play Hearthstone again. And then it was like literally ah. like two weeks before Marvel Snap came out. And then I got fully addicted to that instead. Um, so, yeah, I just haven't yeah. haven't bothered yet. But Yeah, anyway. that was that was that was what got me to like kind of log back into it. And mm -hmm. then I remembered someone telling me that they were getting really back into hearthstone but only mm. the battlegrounds version right um and so i was like well let's actually give it a try and mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of been my little little daily mm. thing for <laughs> the past few months but cool. yeah i just kind of needed something else to talk about because yeah we're in we're in the calm before the storm at the moment <laughs> i mean you say you needed something else to talk about you have also got destiny 2 on the list yeah, my um, client did. My client did the new raid. It took us eighteen hours. Jesus Christ! So anyone saying that it was too easy can go. <laughs> but how much of that is because, as someone who's only ever done Destiny raids, like way after they came out, so like, I, like you know, I'm like over leveled, and I've usually got people telling me what to do. How much of that eighteen hours is just figuring out what to do, and how much is like right? Okay, let's actually try and uh... do it. Do you know what I mean? To be honest, it this this so we've this is my third raid going mm -hmm. in at day one. Mm -hmm. Um we did uh King's Fall, which obviously is a remastered raid from Destiny One, but yeah. with some of the mechanics changed, so you did still have to kind of figure out what was different. We couldn't mm -hmm. even get past the first encounter on that. It was just like smashing our heads against a brick wall, so we gave up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh and then we also did uh Vow of the Disciple day one, which was the Witch Queen, the raid that launched like a week and a half after Witch Queen came out. Mm -hmm. um, that had horrific server issues. Oh, so shit. even in the first encounter, we figured out relatively quickly how to do it. Mm. But we were having server issues where mm. essentially there was one point in the encounter where we would get kicked to orbit. 
oh, without fuck. fail. So yeah, yeah. again, we kind of gave up on that one pretty uh-huh. quick. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, with the new one, uh, Root of Nightmares. Yeah, it, we we figured out what to do fairly easily on pretty much all of the encounters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was just just doing them because basically what Destiny does for whenever a raid launches for the first four, for previous raids it was the first twenty four hours. They've now extended it to be the first forty eight hours. They right. have a thing called contest mode enabled mm-hmm. where it basically caps your power right. at about twenty points lower than you really should be for the oh, encounter shit. so it okay. just makes it way harder yeah um yeah over the 48 hours we put in about 18 hours we would mm. kind of decided that we were going to wait until contest mode ended mm-hmm. and then go back in and we were like well if we're all getting on at about five mm. on the sunday for the end of contest mode to just smash through it on mm. regular mm-hmm. Do we want to just maybe jump back in for like the last hour or so of contest mode? Just we essentially had a coach, one of our guys, because we use obviously Discord. Mm-hmm. Um, we one of the guys was playing on PC and mm-hmm. was sharing his screen. So someone right. else who had completed it with another group jumped in and was watching the stream and coaching us like proper, <laughs> proper esports. It was really cool. <laughs> um and yeah, and we ended up doing it with 15 minutes of contest mode wow. to spare. Holy shit. So yeah, it was a lot of people have kind of bitched and whinge going, oh, it's because it's so easy this time. And <laughs> I think it was something like 45,000 raid groups mm-hmm. finished it, which is the highest mm-hmm. out of the high, the highest it's been for mm-hmm. like first completion of a raid that Destiny, I think, has ever had. Mm-hmm. But you know, it was on for 48 hours. There weren't yeah. any server issues. Mm-hmm. Of course, it was going to be higher. Um, Plus, just like the interest in t- trying that must be gathering over time as well, right? More yeah, players who spent more time in it and are just like, actually, yeah, fuck it. Let's try and do day one yeah. completion. I mean, I will never do that, but I it's, can see the appeal. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is such a good experience. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, there was definitely points on, I think it was the Friday night, it hit like 2 a.m. We'd been, we descent, we, we essentially got up to like the third encounter pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And the third one took us a long time um, to actually. I was going to say, because when, get when you're getting to like on, 2 a.m., so... you, mu- you must all be playing like shit at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this is like okay. So you do like a it's, it, this is so this is like a time time limited event, right? So you do it on the on the first day, and then you get like something extra, presumably for finishing this within yes. the first day. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So it must be absolutely awful if you fail like, to do this. <laughs> and you put in like like yeah. twenty hours or whatever into this, and you're just like, okay, that was um, that was. I mean, waste that... of time. Yeah. That did happen when Forsaken launched. Uh, oh, the yeah. raid that came out with Forsaken was called The Last Wish. Mm. And so just for comparison, this new raid, the world's first... The, the, so basically, if you are the raid group that finishes it first, Bungie gives you these like wrestling belts that are all like <laughs> Destiny raid themed. They're cool as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, and mean, like in real life or yeah. like... Okay, no, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> They're really, really cool. Um, and the group, the group that finished uh, Root of Nightmares first, uh, did it in two and a half hours. Wow. Last wish. Uh, this was back when you only had twenty four hours to do it mm-hmm. in order to get like the uh, the triumph and the emblem that says you did it like within the first twenty four hours. Uh, the first group finished at like 24 hours and 10 minutes or something oh, stupid like no one completed that raid mm-hmm. or i could be i could be wrong it could maybe have been like one or two groups but pretty mm-hmm. much like no one because the final boss was just absolutely mm-hmm. ridiculous mm-hmm. um yeah they can be they can be really long they can be really knackering mm-hmm. um and you really have to go into it with a group of people who you get on with because i think the (laughs) especially yeah when you when you hit like 3 a.m and you've been stuck on this one thing for the past like three four hours you you know tensions Mm. are going to get a little bit high my clan 
um are mostly people that i work with with like a few mm. sort of friends of friends who have been kind of brought in mm. um yeah and it's just a really really gr- good group of guys um mm. yeah it's it's a really fun experience it's tough mm-hmm. but yeah figure yeah being able to kind of like figure things out and i mean the re- the reaction when we finally finished it was was pretty amazing it was really yeah, good so yeah if you if you've never done a day one raid before 100 percent, give it a try nah um <laughs> <laughs> no it does sound amazing i just yeah i don't think i'd ever have the the patience sadly but um, i think yeah. yeah i think i think also having not having kids is probably yes. a yeah. pretty good thing to yeah. not have to worry about <laughs> Joe, there's more chance of Asher doing that than me. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you can like tag team it. You just swap halfway through. He does like six hours, you do six, and then just, yeah, just rotate. He's he's, he's shown no interest in first person shooters at all. He's just probably a good thing. Yeah, he's like, you know, tried to give him, like, he tried, as I said, we tried like Fortnite and things like that, and he just doesn't really care. It's it's weird. Good. Although he does love Splatoon. No, well, it's the best one that's why yeah. uh, <laughs> right Sean uh, do you want to do yours yeah so I've been playing Meet Your Maker haven't I mm-hmm. as a good Sony employee playing a Playstation <laughs> Plus game um, no I had a lot of love for uh, Meet Your Maker I'm not sure if anyone has seen it on the store or at least seen it around if you I haven't d- I'm aware of it okay. I added through, it to my through... library yeah. I'm aware of it through Instagram adverts. For some reason, th- that was the first place I heard of this, but I, you explain cool. it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the best way to describe it is imagine Mario Maker, but with guns, maybe? Okay. Um, the game is set in a very, very, very post-apocalyptic uh, future where there is some alien life form that you serve as your... I don't know, you're, you, someone that you worship, but you also want it to be able to repopulate something. The story is very light. It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's one of those games where it's mechanic first, let's think about the story much later. Mm. Um, and the game is more or less split into two um, halves. There is Raiden, not like Destiny, mm. and Bilden. And mm. the reason I mentioned Mario Maker is uh, it is an asynchronous multiplayer game game but you don't ever see the opponent that you're playing Mm -hmm. so in this game you play it's a first person uh, game where you play a character uh, who's called a custodian you own your base or your outpost and in this world you need to collect lots of these resources called uh, genetic materials or gen mat as they call it in the game Mm -hmm. and to be able to collect these and to deposit it to your your alien worshiper thing i don't even know the name of it uh, you need to collect it from other players bases Mm -hmm. so in this game in the first person you you choose a location so it can it'll be like a normal hard or brutal and what it is is you join uh, you 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 load into an a a game uh, an outpost where someone has created the base Mm -hmm. and more or less it is a human player has made a, a maze filled of traps and enemies and what you're doing as this custodian is you need to be able to get to this point, collect this um, this 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 uh, source, and escape the base. Mm-hmm. More or less, that's what the game is in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. But um, the fun comes into it when you realise that your character has um, limited weapons. So there's only like two weapons in the entire game, mm-hmm. and these weapons are limited to maybe two to three shots only. Oh, you wow. can okay. collect. So you can collect your ammo again, mm. but you need to be able to shoot traps when you see them. These traps range from spike traps and walls to um, kind of crossbow darts that fire. I think like kind of Indiana Jones, but in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also AI um, guards that are around who will fire upon you as well. And you need to be able to make your way into these labyrinths of mazes, depending on what the player has come up with, Um with only kind of two to three shots that you can recover to recover them. You have to physically go over to them. Mm-hmm. And also when you collect this resource, um, if you are a smart player, you can set these traps to 
maybe not appear when you first go in, but only appear after your resource has been taken. Okay. So your way back out could have more traps. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the really cool thing is um, when you've been able to go into a world, you'll see that there is a creature that is all, it's like a human or kind of a, uh, yeah, like a human, but it's carrying a box on its back. And this, this creature would always go from the start of the location where you've spawned in towards the, um, the source that you want to collect. Mm -hmm. So it always keep going. So if you ever are lost or where to go, mm -hmm. this kind of generated robot will keep going down the safest, quickest route. Mm -hmm. it, it will never trigger any traps, but it's their way of, you know, in Super Mario Maker where you have to be able to complete your own level to publish it. Yeah. Right? yeah so yeah. you break it. In this game, you don't have to complete your own maps, but this creature will always travel to the center so you know that there is always a path to get mm -hmm. there, so you don't have mm -hmm. to complete it yourself. It's always possible to do it, yeah. yeah. It's always possible to do it. And mm -hmm. so you are armed with your gun, which only fires two bolts at the start, and a grappling hook, so that will kind of grab, uh, pull you towards a surface and then release you. And whilst you're going through these worlds, you, the really cool thing is the traps don't instantly trigger. There's maybe a second where you'll see in the corner of your screen um, like a red kind of uh, marker saying, mm -hmm. this is about to attack. So mm -hmm. there is a moment where you can lean around corners and then if you see these markers appear, then you know something's tr about to trigger or something's about to shoot at you. So you might take a step back or you might want to kind of set some tra traps off and then step back. And it's really tense because you can replay some of these levels, um, but every time you do, um, the player who has created it gets points from your first attempt. So where you've died mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on variant, they get to see where you've killed it. Like in Mario Maker, where you see the all the X's that appear. Yeah, yeah. So upon click, so to jump on the other side. So after I completed a few um, levels, I collect enough resources, and when you go back to your main kind of hub, you have loads of other kind of NPCs that you can kind of level up your weapons, so you can kind of upgrade them to have maybe another shot in your gun, mm -hmm. or you can have a different suit that is much faster but not as good as melee, mm -hmm. or you can buy consumables. So you have grenades as well, which only have a certain amount, and grenades will trigger um, tra blow up traps and enemies. Or you can buy new traps and stuff like that. But when you get enough, you can actually buy a space on the game server to have your own base. Mm -hmm. And when you have your own base, then you have the ability to make all of the traps yourself. And the reason why you want to play this in two halves is when you have your own base, uh, you, the game tells you that uh, you have a base means that you're collecting this resource every so often. Mm -hmm. So for you to be able to progress the game, you need to make a base. But in, in opening your base up, it means players will come into it. Mm -hmm. And it, whilst you're building your base out, you can choose where you want to put your guards and your traps. And then you can kind of see the, augment, the augments with these things. So the traps, mm -hmm. you can have it. So as mentioned earlier, you can set it so it only goes off the second time. So it's completely invisible. You can't do anything. When you place your own kind of, kind of uh, guards, you can go into first person mode and kind of record a patrol. So you can have them oh, face certain ways. And then you can make them walk back and then kind of have that loop so you can actually walk or just be static. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, uh, you can set your, depending on how many traps and guards you have, changes the difficulty of your game, your, mm -hmm. your level. So it mm -hmm. goes into a playlist. So let's just say you put 10 traps and five enemies, it'll come under normal. But mm -hmm. if you put 25 traps, it'll become under brutal and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so it doesn't necessarily benefit you to just fill it with stuff, right? You want it. You kind of want yeah. it to be as hard as possible within a given category, I guess. Yeah. To ensure that it's like like really clever placement and all that kind yeah. of thing. To yeah. yeah, exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can set it as a normal kind of map, or you can put it into this thing called overdrive. So it means that anything that's stolen from your base. So if someone actually gets through to your core and escapes with it, then you are losing that resource. But right. upon every kill that you get of someone trying to take it, you get double the amount of points. So they drop their, their own resources as mm -hmm. well as their own um, kind of building materials. Mm -hmm. So I, I quickly learned whilst playing in other people's games, you can just go straight from the normal levels to the brutal and just be extra careful mm -hmm. because it's always going to be as difficult. It's just the amount of traps and enemies they're going to be in level the game doesn't become right. more harder that you can, you, it's always one ship quick kill anyway mm -hmm. it's just that if you have if you're going to be extra careful and you want to play it in a very sophisticated way all the levels are kind of the same difficulty except it's the amount of time you spend but one thing i quickly learned when making my first level is well if most new players only get two shots with their guns mm -hmm. and you have patrolmen and you have traps that you have to shoot 
most of the levels I played at the start is you get to see one patrol person, you probably take two shots at them because there's bullet drop as well. So you want to mm-hmm. line up, probably miss the first one. Mm-hmm. Second one, you get them, and then you go and collect your ammo. Mm-hmm. And then you see some traps, and you're like, I'm going to shoot these traps and just trap. Mm-hmm. But what I learned is when I built my level is, well, I can place however many guards I want, and people are mostly going to have two shots. So mm-hmm. maybe if I put maybe three enemies that are at a distance, mm-hmm. then people will have to shoot maybe three enemies but only have two shots Mm -hmm. but also to collect the extra bolts again you need to zip line over and expose yourself and it just became a game of Mm -hmm. how do i outsmart another player and it becomes the mario maker thing of Mm -hmm. do i hide things around corners or do i make things appear do i and and it's really it's really lovely it's so rewarding to be able to kind of log back into your game and be like 13 more people have died in your level (laughs) and then you go back into the build mode and you get you actually have to go and pick up the resources that they've dropped in Mm -hmm. the free roam mode there um and it's and it's really lovely um just to be able to play something like it i don't know if it's gonna be everyone's cup of tea it's definitely i guess it's more puzzle with Mm -hmm. first person Mm -hmm. in it than kind of your casual game but um, it definitely scratches that itch. I know I keep saying Mario Maker, but I, I do love the fact that you can make the craziest of levels and play in other people's levels. And then mm. when you, you know, it continues offline whilst you're away. So, you know, right now there's potential people stealing my resources out there. <laughs> and um, it, it, it's lovely. And um, there's daily rewards. So the more you play and the more you log in, the more resources you have to probably get better traps. Mm-hmm. And eventually your base will res- run out of resource because it is a mining facility. So you do need to go back in and you can call, you can do this thing called a prestige or level. So if enough people die, we well, get rewarded enough accolades. So people say it's brutal or it's fun or it's ingenious. Mm-hmm. Then it kind of revamps your level to be like, cool, we're going to let it run again. That's that's what I was going to ask because you can give feedback as well on these levels, yeah. Like, and indeed. But is that a kind of like thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing, or is it like more detailed? Or what's it's the... there is no negative. Um, there is no negative unless you say so. The accolades is it's brutal, which I guess you could probably say is negative. Mm-hmm. But some people are like, no, brutal. I love Dark Souls, so this is fun. <laughs> um, but there is like ingenious. This is artistic. So people would make kind mm-hmm. of really cool sculptures in there. So there's only nice. four accolades you can give. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's available at least on PS4 and PS5. And one thing I haven't touched, which I'm sure is completely beautiful to do, is you can invite a friend in, and I think you can raid together. There is social raids in this. Um, you don't get any resources as if you can, mm-hmm. you know, rebuild your base, but you can place some of these maps together. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, some of the really cool things I've seen. So you can have like uh, these cubes that are just lava, like acidic lava cubes, and unless you step into them or you fall into them it's fine it's just decoration on the wall but uh one of the levels i was playing earlier today is just a straight kind of corridor that went round corners and you can see these cubes on either side and it's like i can see the i can see the source at the end if i grab that it should be straightforward as soon as you grab that you hear the the mechanics start to whirl because the second phase of traps start to engage and mm. like what's going to happen well these cubes aren't going to do anything and then you realize that the player has unlocked the ability to have like harpoons and they've put it on the other sides of these cubes. Mm-hmm. So whilst you're getting back now, these harpoons are trying to pull you into the lava. It's like, <laughs> that's pretty smart. And it's just a really ingenious way of doing things. And this is only the first week of this game being out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see what this, other people do. This, this, yeah, just imagine him playing this and just be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 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 sounds it, really good uh, yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. everything it's i think on, isn't it it's on xbox as well i know that i assume it's on yeah. pc but yeah yeah it sounds and really I, good i hope it's cross play i was it's gonna say is it yeah is it cross platform but yeah i don't know yeah but it's, it's fun and i don't think we get too many of these games mm-hmm. every so often so mm-hmm. you know for thinking outside the box it's it's really cool and mm-hmm. um yeah the reward is just to be able to kind of come back in log back in and be like cool how can i better my base mm. or seeing how other people play be like can i do this and mm-hmm. make it yeah so yeah it's it's a lot of fun so i highly recommend if you have a ps plus membership mm-hmm. just to kind of jump in it and uh probably raid my base <laughs> fun. Yeah. cool so yeah that's meet your maker mm-hmm. uh, uh so also i have phoenix wright ace attorney um oh yeah i've been streaming that on my channel um we played for, for about 11 sessions i played it originally on ios about almost nine years ago so i completely forgot all of the, the story but mm-hmm. it is one of those games where 
as a streamer, you kind of think, what games can I play that I can interact with mm-hmm. the audience with? You know, have mm-hmm. time to, if you have to press a button to progress the story or the dialogue, then that's perfect because you can read the chat and stuff yeah. like that. But I completely forgot how balmy um, the, <laughs> the Ace Attorney <laughs> game is. Like, it's actually insane I, I know i know you folks have spoken about it on on the channel but i completely forgot how much how much drama you can yeah. have in a court of law mm-hmm. and um yes yeah, so it, was, it was really fun we played the entirety of the first game on stream and i tried to do a voice for each character i was gonna to say to that would be my first like as a streamer that would be my first concern is do i yeah. come up with voices for everyone yeah, but, you know, yeah. yeah. The, 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 that's, the, that's a lot of dialogue. That's that's a lot of dialogue. dialogue. <laughs> and trying to remember it and not do like accents that aren't PC and stuff like that. Like it's, <laughs> it's it's nuts. But mm. yeah, I mean, for any any folks who have played uh, the Ace Attorney games, I've only mm. played the first one out of the trilogy, mm. but it's 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 just definitely a romp. And I and mm. I, the thing I've completely forgot about it when I played the original game is original time, is it's all it has a story arc across all four mm. or five episodes. So yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's not just you. You do your investigation, then you do your court of law. It's like the, your best friend that you help in the first mis- mm-hmm. uh, episode is a recurring character, mm-hmm. and someone that helps you in the first thing might not, you know, be able to, or well, they might pass away, and then mm-hmm. it's just like, oh, this is always in their honor, or mm-hmm. someone who you're trying to always take down as a prosecutor ends up being someone that you might have to work with, and it's it's a lot of fun. But um, <laughs> I completely forgot how out of the box some of the solutions are and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. where yeah. it really rubbed me up the wrong way because i logic makes us who we are like mm-hmm. if something makes sense if it's this this answer this this evidence should counter this mm. and it doesn't and it's mm. because the developers have designed a very specific thing yeah mm. It made me do a thing which I absolutely hate doing in games, and it is the save scumming. It's like yeah. you only have maybe four temp- four lives in the court of lords before you lose, you get game over. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, this doesn't make sense. I need to save it. And mm-hmm. doing that on stream is quite embarrassing because it's mm-hmm. like, well, this doesn't make sense. And everyone's throwing kind of ideas, being like, well, use the parrot on this person. I'm like, <laughs> why does that make sense? And when mm-hmm. you do it and you hear the music kind of you know die down it's like because mm-hmm. something epic's gonna happen it's like how does that make so anyway you get you it... get stuff like that and then the other thing you get in those games which can be quite irritating sometimes is that you know like you how you have to like press for further information or whatever yes. so then sometimes you like press for further information but if you don't do it in the right way at the right time then you yes. don't get a further bit of information mm. that you need to unlock the next thread of yes. you know of like of the deduction and it's yeah, it is terrible. I mean, you see, I mean, I've spoken about these games a lot because I love them. Like, and also, like when you say like about the threads of like the characters going across like the episodes, they go yeah. across games as well. Like mm. in the the second and third one, it's like recurring characters. Really, there's recurring stories and that kind of thing. And they do like some of them are like them. I would say probably the third one in particular does a much better job in terms of like things being logical than the the first game. Oh, does. good. Because I remember it was the second game that threw me off because I found mm. there were quite a few instances where, yeah, like you could have made like enough incorrect choices that because you can actually get like thrown out of court, right? Yeah, I remember yeah. That. yeah. There's like actual game over scenarios, but it was so I'd be like, okay, well I'll reload my save and I'll make a different choice, but it was actually a previous decision that doomed me. Mm. And yes. then, but then the story kind of carries on, and then allows you to think there's another choice, whereas actually you're already yeah. fucked. Yes. Um, so that was really frustrating. Um, mm. But yeah, I seem to remember that was just the second game. I don't think the first one did that, which is weird to then be like, oh, actually, let's make this really obvious design blunder in the second one. <laughs> Strange. As I said, that that does improve as it goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But then, like more recently, I played the Great Ace Attorney games, which were the ones that were only really recent. Well, not recently, it's about a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Like released that were like Japanese only releases, and then they like translated them for in- like, into English. And I, I actually, if I look back at actually, I hated those games. <laughs> and the re- the reason is is because it one of the things that I think is so good about the original trilogy, mm. and particularly the first one and probably the, the third one as well, is like I I still think they're they're well written. And the mm-hmm. characters are brilliant and like funny and like sort of engaging, and but also they have a good economy of words in those games as well. Mm-hmm. Like you're not 
you're not there's not like reams of text you know for mm-hmm. to explain things whereas with the great Ace attorney games they i think they were trying to sound like because it's set in sort of a steampunk sort of victorian england kind of like mm-hmm. setting mm-hmm. and i think they were trying to sound like kind of like grand or like you know this is how we spoke <laughs> in the old days world but it in, ends up being just ridiculously verbose Mm -hmm. you know where it's like it's just there's just so much text Mm. that you're just like i you know you could they they really could have just used like three words or whatever and instead they're using like just paragraphs of text and it just killed me because you see i i I love reading story like story in games Mm -hmm. i love visual novels i really but it was just too much like in this case but that's why but this this is what's really frustrating about this series because like you're saying it's like you've got these really interesting characters you've got like a you know it's funny, you know, well plotted and everything, but then the mechanics of it yep. never quite work, mm. and it's that's what can be frustrating about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it definitely bursts that bubble and it reminds you it's a game, mm. like it's mm. not just logic where it makes sense. It's no, there is going to be there is a linear story, mm. and for it to have the twists, for you as the gamer, you can't really know everything from the outset. Mm-hmm. So you know, at the start of each um, episode, you probably see the murder take place Mm -hmm. and you see who the murderer is Mm -hmm. but then that's just the the dramatic irony of oh could it have been some could it have been something else Mm -hmm. and you've seen that you're like i know who the murderer is but that's not how it's played out Mm -hmm. and for you not to for you to know everything would make it boring but the twists i mean it's 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 nuts and there is definitely moments where like I don't know where this is going, viewers, because mm-hmm. I it's, and it's and it's there to keep the drama there, but mm-hmm. yeah. it doesn't make logic sense <laughs> as the player. Yeah. You see, I do want. You see, I really want to play back, um, like the fourth one, like which is Apollo Justice, mm. and also the DS ones that came out, or was it three DS? It's three three DS ones that yeah, came yeah. out. Um, but they've never they've never re released them apart from on iOS. But I think they're delisted now, mm. and they keep. They before they talked about releasing those as like an, in a collection as well, and I'd love to see if the if if I remember correctly that they kind of improved a lot of that, you know, like in mm-hmm. in later games. Because the other thing is, is like the the first one in particular that was originally a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that's wow. but we, yeah, but like, in, in the UK we we discovered it as a DS game, didn't we? Yeah, we never got and the, it's, the GBA one. Yeah. And like the the one that came out on the DS, which is the one that kind of like you know did really well, mm-hmm. I think, like in the sense that they started to like re-release them like across like in the UK and in mm-hmm. America and stuff, was they, they like, because they also, there's a fifth case in that one as well yes. that isn't in the Game Boy um, version. Mm-hmm. It's um It was like tacked on at the end. And the reason is because it has like all these little features that are like DS features yeah. actually. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. like, so it had like, you know, like you can like touch the screen to like put like the powder down and, you know. <laughs> Wasn't like, that like, yeah, there was like bits stuff, of evidence you, know? you could like rotate them and, and yeah, yeah. them and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but really I, cool. But I'd love it if they, yeah, I'd, I would quite like it if they, they re-released the others as well, but mm. it's all gone very quiet, that has, so. Yeah. 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 There's, there's mm-hmm. definitely space in the market for more of these. Like, I'm surprised mm. there isn't an influx of detective games similar to this, but mm. um, it was lovely. I, there was that Harvey Birdman game, was, was it Harvey Birdman? I there was, yeah, there was a Harvey Birdman one. Um, there was also uh, <laughs> Aviary Attorney. That's the um, one, yeah. Which is yeah, which is all yeah, all birds. <laughs> well, the, the the Harvey Birdman was based on a Adult Swim cartoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. I yeah, I had I had that on PSP. Mm-hmm. Was it any good? I assume not. <laughs> well, the Adult uh... Swim had this really rubbish phase of like because there was like an Aqua Teen Hunger Force like golf game, and apparently mm. that was shite as well. But sorry, go on. <laughs> um. I th- I remember thinking it was fine. Okay. I mean, I haven't played. I've never played any of the Ace Attorney games. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I completed. I don't think I completed Harvey Birdman. I think probably mm-hmm. for the same reason why I tend to like bounce off of um, any kind of like interactive novel yeah. type games. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I remember thinking it was fine. Mm-hmm. Like it was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, graphically, like it worked really really well on PSP because mm-hmm. obviously it was like the fifty style cartoon graphics yeah, yeah, and like it yeah. looked really great. Mm-hmm. It nailed like the tone of mm-hmm. the cartoon really really well. Mm-hmm. So I think it I think it was good. 
It's a long cool. time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so there's been a few, right? But nothing's quite. I, I wonder if it's one of those genres where like it's just it needs to be like long enough mm. that someone can basically do something very similar, and no one's going to be like, oh, but you're just copying Phoenix Wright because if they're not making Phoenix Wright anymore, then why shouldn't someone else have a I go? Think- you know? I think also I really think these games are really difficult to make as well because yeah. of the fact that you're yeah. you're creating you know because of how like intricate you know the the stories are mm-hmm. and they you know and, like the twists and all that kind of thing and making mm-hmm. it so that it works I mm-hmm. think it's it must be yeah and maybe the audience is quite small as as well mm-hmm. you know I think for, they're probably yeah I mean they're probably hard to write and they're probably very difficult to localize as well right like making sure mm-hmm. you've you've translated everything in a way that like certain turns of phrase or certain words or whatever are the, the yeah. clue where you're like hang on a minute like that <laughs> must actually be really difficult but yeah i, I hope there's a studio out there who is doing a vr version of that because <laughs> the, the detective side of it makes sense you, you know mm-hmm. think of the batman detective game or any kind of game mm-hmm. where you can look around and then in all the stuff in the court of law just the gestures you can mm-hmm. you know pull up some evidence like it just be it would just be one of those immersive things where like i'm never gonna hopefully be a defendant in, you know, in court. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. Then, yeah, just... Fingers crossed. <laughs> but then be able to stand in a court of law and kind of see Mars Edward from one side and the judge and then mm-hmm. have your evidence. Hopefully someone can hear this and make our dream come true. <laughs> I mean, there was, there were not, not VR, but there was also Paradise Killer. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's true. Again, yes. mm-hmm. bounced off that for the, Did you? the same. Oh, man. Yeah, so like I... I feel like I should probably go back mm-hmm. and. I mean, really I, I get it because I know, like, you make like, an effort. You get on with like systems heavy stuff, don't you? Like, so I can yeah, see it why. Was, yeah, it was a little bit too much talking, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but I, I'm I'm as annoyed at myself for not getting yeah. on with that because obviously, the the few song there's a few songs from the soundtrack which mm-hmm. constantly come up in mm-hmm. like my spotify unwrapped and have <laughs> ever since yeah. like the soundtrack is an absolute stone cold banger like mm-hmm. all the way through yep. um all the character design just the whole world in that it's weird and everything's just very strange and very overly designed mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah it's it should be my absolute dream game but <laughs> i I mean that that I was a great to game. Stick with it because it was it was also because that that was like a game where it's like the story is what you make of it kind of thing as well, which is why I really <laughs> In, like yeah, like that. including it's, your verdict at the end. It's yeah, like, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's like how you feel about it, and mm-hmm. that's I love that. I thought that was very clever. Mm-hmm. It was good game. really good game, nice. but yeah, a lot of dialogue to wade through. Which if you're not, I don't like. I think it was well written, but I I, I also generally struggle with like visual novel type stuff. Mm. Um, oh yeah like so. my me me bouncing off of that game is a hundred percent me and not mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. kind of comment about the game yeah. like at mm-hmm. all it's it's brilliant and mm-hmm. yeah i wish maybe maybe i will maybe i would make an attempt to properly stick with it mm-hmm. uh sean you got one more I, i'll keep it short and sweet no, it's fortnite <laughs> fortnite uh mm-hmm. Zero build, still the greatest things that happened to that game. Is that, is that still in it? Because I've I've literally. Yeah, yeah. I think I, it's a permanent feature now because it's yeah. brought yes. enough people to come back into mm-hmm. it. I, I have just re-downloaded it. Nice. So, so, so the current season, there is a uh, a Neo Tokyo like mm-hmm. city where people can go and live their fantasies of all of these holograms and alligators doing sushi. Um, it, it's fun, um, but it's very there's a there's a very um, eastern kind of touch to a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, and they've replaced. Um, if you've watched My Hero Academia, they removed the Deku kind of smash, which is an an ability that is like a almost a like Kamehameha kind of mm. wave that it's just air. It used to break the game, and even like yep, feedback. Let's change it. So instead, they replaced it with katanas, which you can do a slice in the direction, or you can do an alternative fire, which fires you in a direction. So you kind of do like a, a kind of a slow kind of anime kind of pose, mm-hmm. and then you dart up towards a direction, any direction that you want. And you can do three of them. So it's good for traversal. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fun. Um, yep. It's again, it's Fortnite. You get, you, you know what it is, but um, it's a fun season. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, I think they're just about to start a. Oh, Attack on Titan has just started now on this. Oh, fourth. that's right. Yeah, because mm. Aaron's in the the sort of intro video thing. I I my thing with Fortnite is I'll uh, well I say my thing. 
this is recently developed. I'll just load it up like every three months and just yeah. wonder what the fuck is going on, and then yeah. weirdly have a good time and then not play it again for a bit. Yeah. But, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. It, right now it's Attack on Titan versus Mr. Beast, if that makes sense to anyone. So. <laughs> I mean, it makes it makes as much sense as Fortnite <laughs> has for the past yeah. year to mm-hmm. two years. Mm-hmm. But this is what's so nice about it. Like you know, I've said before, because I've it's not like I've been there since day one, right? You know, like when like people try and get into Destiny Two now, it's fucking impossible because there's so much stuff mm. that's going on. Fortnite is equally hard to get into, but it doesn't matter because it's just such a weird mishmash of stuff that's come and gone over time that I'm just like, yeah, I've, I don't know what's going on, but I've also zero investment, and that's fine. Yeah, like it just just doesn't matter. So yeah, I'm all right with it. Yeah, I. <laughs> It's it's I'm very cognizant of the time, so I will just say t- <laughs> for, for people to go and watch it if you haven't already, but watch the uh from the state of Unreal, the entire section oh, yeah. on the uh un- Unreal Engine for Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um because that shit is wild it's and pretty. I yeah, there's gonna be yeah. there's gonna be some mad stuff coming out of that and mm-hmm everything epic's doing around how they're um not necessarily monetizing it but mm. whatever the phrase is for how much like revenue share they're giving to creators and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. and the fact that anything you make in it you fully own especially if you compare that to like roblox and mm-hmm. how scummy yeah. that is mm-hmm. like yeah is yep. is is mind-blowing what mm. could possibly start coming out of that mm-hmm. and also how it makes it so easy for you know you kids can start making stuff in fortnite creative mode and then as they get older progress into unreal engine for fortnite and then from there progress into the thing, unreal it? engine it... 5 which is yeah. free like yeah. it's because like yeah. ro- like i know like roblox like yeah there, there are like dev teams who make roblox stuff but yeah, like the fact that yeah, you could get involved with Unreal stuff, and that's the the thin end of the wedge that is an actual industry standard game engine. Like that's yeah, mm. that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, cool. James, do you yours? Yeah, um, <laughs> I've got a couple of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so Fire Emblem Engage, I went back to. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, because this was a game that I kind of. I bounced off for quite a long time. We, yeah, and... we, we we all had weird feelings about the opening sort of five hours, didn't we? And it yeah. seemed like a brilliant strategy game, but the story stuff made us all feel a bit icky. Yeah, yeah. and that follows through right through to the oh, end. Brilliant. Um, oh, no. <laughs> because this, this is the thing about it, though. The tactical stuff in yeah. this game is mm-hmm. absolutely superb, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. very, very engaging, particularly towards the end, because what they try and do is they, they mix a lot of the, the maps up so that then there are like these constraints that force you to have to use different strategies as well uh, mm-hmm. to get through, which I usually I hate that kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. like when you're being sort of forced down a, a sort of a path, yeah. but it really works in this because of mm-hmm. how like diverse all the emblems are and how you can mm-hmm. like you know work things together and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that, and mostly because it felt like the kind of puzzle that I enjoy. Yeah, um, you know that you know like looking at the map and thinking mm-hmm. how this could possibly play out, and then maybe if you try something like a bit, um, you know. If you if you sort of uh, you know sort of take a risk you know that you mm. sometimes you can really pay off mm. and you can like finish something really quickly like mm. more than you're expecting to so it's brilliant for that it's absolutely brilliant mm. but as we said before and I can say this now because I played the entire thing this has the worst characters and story <laughs> in the game I think I've ever played like, it's, it's like it's incredibly bad like it's just such a shame terrible. because I know like Awakening was a long time ago now. Mm. But I was I was late to it, and but when I did play it, like I really fucking enjoyed it, and I love so many of the characters. Like yeah. it's not a good story, but it's just an interesting mm-hmm. scenario, and I liked the people in it. Um, mm-hmm. And it just feels like they've never really recaptured that since. Right? No, I mean I despised all of the characters <laughs> in this. Like absolutely, like they were. It was just they were absolutely terrible. I mean yeah. I ended up skipping everything. Like mm-hmm. by the by the time I was in the sort of the back sort of one third of the game i was like okay i'm done Mm -hmm. with even trying to engage with this because it's just awful like the voice acting just the 
like it, I, may, maybe if it was if I'd said it's Japanese, maybe it would sound better. But mm-hmm. the voice acting in the English version I thought was was shocking, mm-hmm. and just I mean, just the characters are just so like there's just nothing to them. <laughs> They're not interesting. The, the story just makes no sense whatsoever apart from the fact that they've just they've done this obviously because they wanted to bring back all the characters from the previous games and mm-hmm. they wanted to bring them together together so that you could then have these sort of like interesting like tactical battles mm-hmm. you could just done that and just don't bother with trying to like craft this story around it because mm-hmm. it's dreadful mm-hmm. um but as i said tactically there's a an incredibly good game here and i would recommend it on that alone mm-hmm. like i would say it's definitely still worth playing it's just skip all the the cut scenes don't i mean don't bother yeah just don't bother with the characters <laughs> they're awful like awful <laughs> like really awful and it's just it was embarrassing like mm. they it was embarrassingly like you know to like to play it mm. like you know just the, the way the characters are behaving and stuff and oh just the terrible acting but anyway <laughs> but apart from that really good game that's great like the, right, cool. <laughs> the, the, the mechanics <laughs> very good but the other thing that I played and finished last week mm-hmm. was um, was Chia. Oh yeah. Um, so I fin- I played this as well, and I know that Matt's played it. Mm-hmm. I know David's played it, mm-hmm. and that you've played. Have you played it as well, Sean? I haven't this I week. Have. I haven't had time, but I do want to. Yeah. So I played it and I finished it, mm-hmm. and I have no idea what David was on about <laughs> with this game. Absolutely no idea. I don't oh. know why he's taken against it <laughs> so much. It doesn't make any sense to me because mm-hmm. the Okay, so first of all, the combat is very simple. Like, mm-hmm. it's not difficult at all. Mm. And he kept going on about those factory bits. Mm. It's really easy. You just go in there, and then you just, like, possess, like, a bit of fire or whatever. Mm. Just torch everyone. It's done. <laughs> it's And it's it's not difficult at all. Mm. And I... Because then also he was complaining about, like, oh, you know, I, I didn't... You know, I had to go to the bit with the, the factory stacks, and I didn't know what to do. It's like, the game tells you what to do. It says, you need to go to this factory, this factory, and this factory, mm-hmm. and then you then... You know, block up the the uh, you know the, the chimneys and that's mm-hmm. it. You're done. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not complicated at all. And the exploring, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I I never felt limited either by the game in terms of like possessing animals and being able to like fly around. I mean, I'm not sure it would have worked if the, if you were able to fly like the entire map as like a bird or whatever because it would totally break the game. Because like yeah. one of, one of the things that you can do with this is I remember like for. For like destroying the um, you know, the chimneys, the solution that I came up with. Can I spoil this? Does it matter? Yeah, yeah. Go on then. I, mean, I think, I think well, it's, yeah, like, it's a solution to a puzzle. I think that's okay. It's not. A... I mean, you could just do stuff like, like uh, you know, you you pick up some like the dynamite and you put it in your pack or whatever, mm-hmm. morph into a bird, fly mm-hmm. up to the top, and then just chuck it in there. <laughs> you don't have to bother with all the other stuff. It's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm baffled. I'm absolutely <laughs> baffled as to why. This was like such a terrible experience for David. I mm. really don't don't get it. But mm. then, I don't know. Maybe he just I don't know. Maybe he was having a bad day or something, <laughs> and he just well, didn't want to engage with it. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't get it at all. Yeah. Um, but even even stuff like the story, I thought the story was not bad. You know, mm-hmm. I thought it was reasonably enjoyable. I know some people like had problems with like the darker side of like the storytelling, mm-hmm. like from in places. But then. Sometimes I think back to some of the stuff when we were kids that you had, like you know, some of those stories were also pretty dark. I did think know? that, like, <laughs> yeah, like when you when you look at like, yeah, sort of old children's stories that sort of sort of mm. persisted, yeah. all sorts of grim shit in them that you just and and the thing is, is if this is also, I I don't know because I've not researched this, but whether this is based on any sort of stories that were from the developers, you know, from you know from the islands that they were they were working from, yeah. Because they do really sort of explain at the start, don't they? That, yeah, none of none of it's like an exact. You know, it's yeah. not a documentary, mm-hmm. but it's it's inspired by is it New Caledonia. Yeah, New Caledonia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it it would make sense if there were bits of of you know real folklore in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't you know. know. Yeah, and yeah. it's. I mean, also it, it looks fantastic as well. I mean, mm. I played it. I think when. The patch had dropped so that you could play it in performance mode and it's right. over 60 frames and mm-hmm. it, it felt really nice to play. Mm-hmm. I just had a great time with this. You know, mm-hmm. I, I played it over a weekend, like pretty much, and just mm-hmm. really enjoyed it. It was brilliant. So I don't know. It's uh, I'm sure David will tell me I'm wrong, but I, I thought it was good. I, I mean, I game. cool. I think I think I speak for all of us when I say that please put this in your <laughs> game of the year picks, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know. Tempting. But it's, it's, 
Yeah, it's it's good. But the other thing that I played, this is the last thing I played, which I've been playing over the last over this weekend, like over the bank holiday, is I've gone back to Yakuza Five mm-hmm. because this is the only one of the series of the original sort of like series that was on, out on like PS3 and everything that I haven't finished. And I've bought um, Ishin, you know, the the more recent one, which was the remake of the uh, mm-hmm. you know the you know, going back into Japan's past one. But mm-hmm. I haven't played it yet. And it's because I wanted to finish this because I just wanted to put an end, you know, to, to this series mm-hmm. and in the in a good way. And so I started it last year and I played it for quite a while and then I kind of stopped. And I went back to it on Friday and I kind of had to force my way back in because it's very you know how these you've played a bit of these games, yeah, Sean. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You played You know how it's like kind of it, obviously, it's very dialogue heavy, and you you have to be. I have to be in the right mood to play these. You know, yeah, to feel like I want to engage. Mm-hmm. And I managed to force my way back in, and now I'm completely hooked again. And I've been. I mean, I want to be playing it right now, like mm-hmm. honestly, because mm-hmm. it's. I've been playing it like loads today, and it's it's so good. <laughs> Mostly because this time around, as with Yakuza Four, this one is split into different characters. So you play as like, you know, different different protagonists right throughout the game over different chapters. Mm-hmm. But the difference this time is that also you play as Haruka, who's the um, daughter, like adopted daughter of Kiryu in mm-hmm. this. And so when you play as her, you're thinking, okay, well, how's this going to work? Because all the other characters are basically going around beating people up. Mm-hmm. This character's probably not going to do that. It's mm-hmm. a little girl mm-hmm. instead. Mm-hmm. So instead, it basically becomes a rhythm action game. Right. And okay. it's it's a rhythm action game for hours and hours and hours of doing... like Because basically what it is, is the character, she wants to become an idol. Like a, you know, like one of the, mm-hmm. like, you know, the one of these, you know, like stars like in japan Mm -hmm. and so you're basically like just performing songs doing dances and all this kind of thing asher came in like while i was playing it and he was like what on earth are you playing (laughs) it it was like all this like girls like dancing in the background like the whole thing it was pretty fun but it was a really nice change of pace Mm -hmm. mostly also because you can walk around the town without anybody jumping you every five seconds because you know there's no nice fighting mechanics at all so you don't have to do that and i mean some i mean also it does i would say a reasonably good job of like showing like sort of the not the yeah the, the seedier side of all of this of mm-hmm. like this idea of being idols and like mm-hmm. how it's kind of gross like mm-hmm. the whole thing is kind of horrible like you have to do these like handshake events you know where you have to like shake hands with fans and stuff and mm-hmm. like Rachel saw it and she was like where's the hand sanitizer like she was like <laughs> <laughs> Just that like, would be doing that. That's like, <laughs> but it's it's yeah, it's it's still an interesting uh, yeah, it's it's interesting uh, way way to play. And I've just mm-hmm. moved back onto somebody who's kicking and punching people again, so that's mm-hmm. good. And uh, but yeah, but I'm really really enjoying it, and I'm looking to see where it's going because mm-hmm. it also it's set in more diverse locations than most of the other Yakuza games. Oh I've right, played. so it's not just so, in um... it's not just in Kamurocho. It's yeah. it's also in. Um, yeah, it's like in Osaka, and there's also a whole section which is up a mountain, which is pretty oh, wow. cool. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Uh, which is which is really good. Nice. So yeah, it's it's very. I'm very much enjoying it, and I'm glad mm. that I forced my way back into it again. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, hopefully be finished by the next time I'm on here. Um, but yeah, cool. It's good. A uh, couple of relatively short ones from me. Um, I've been playing Shield Maid MX. Um, full disclosure. This is by a well, friend's probably pushing it, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, Mikhail Croder, um, who's part of Kane and Rince. Um, I think I've done shows with him. I can't remember if he's one of those voices that I've just heard on enough episodes that I've assumed I know him. Um, but he uh, very kindly sent us codes for this. Um, so he's worked on this with a, a friend of his. Um, I should say, if we, were, if I was being like a corrupt, I'm just going to recommend this game because he's a mate. I would have done that when it was originally released on itch. Um, but it's now had a steam release. Um, and, uh, I absolutely love it. Um, it's, it's 2d shooter, shoot them up. Um, your spaceship shooting other spaceships, blowing them up. I think there's a story. There's just an alien invasion, something not really sure. Um, but it's, I mean, I'm not much like, uh, 2D shoot ups are something I've always sort of admired. Um, I've never been particularly good at them, um, but I, I can usually tell a good one when I play it. Um, it's just really interesting because it's 
it's a shoot 'em up where most of the time you are trying to get shot. Right? So your your spaceship has this this shield so that when you when an enemy shot touches you, your shield activates and absorbs all enemy shots, right? For like a limited amount of time. But then you but once it's activated it starts to drain immediately. Um and the way you keep it going is by killing enemies. And that sort mm. of recharges it, and that also charges your. You have like an EX ability, right? Which is your big like screen clearing. Depends which ship you choose. One has like a big laser. One has loads of homing rockets, whatever. Um, but it's yeah. So you it then becomes this game of like, so you you're trying to find a shot to pick up, and then that charges your shield, and you're like, right, brilliant. And then you are managing killing enemies, but also wanting to get shot by them. So. If you don't kill enough enemies, you lose the shield, and then you go into danger mode, which is where you can actually die really easily from enemy shots for like a twenty seconds or something. Um, so you don't want to let that happen. But also, if you just kill every enemy as soon as it appears on the screen, it, the enemies won't have any time to shoot at you, so you've got no shots to absorb, right? And as you absorb the shots, that improves your like main weapon and like powers you up, right? So it then becomes this constant sort of managing your shield bar and the enemies on the screen and the things they're shooting at you. Um, and I just, yeah, it's just absolutely fascinating and really, really good fun. Um, it's like, th- there's other stuff that can kill you instantly. So there's like, there's rockets, which will always be lethal. Um, there's, you know, like if you crash into any enemies, that will kill you. So there's like, there's plenty of stuff to look out for, but like on the face of it, yeah, you just like you look, when it's like teaching you how to play, and it's like okay, so you get shot by an enemy, and that activates your shield, and you're just like, what? Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just yeah, I found it absolutely fascinating and really good fun to play. It like eases you in really well, um, in that there's like there's like a bunch of different modes. They all broadly play out the same way. They're all like a two D shooter, but there's like, you know, there's a tutorial where it explains everything and then there's like a, a mode where it's like, this is the game, but it's kind of easier. There's not there's so many enemies. Um and then you unlock like a third mode where it's like this is this is it. This is the game. This is like the primary um, you know, sort of competitive mode like score chasing and stuff and then there's like another mode where there's there's like a, a different ship that does loads of weird and wonderful stuff but that's like a that's like a one life mode so as soon as you die that's it um it's yeah it's really good really really good fun um like it it looks amazing like it's just a proper ridiculous like laser show um stuff blowing up constantly the soundtrack's wicked um i yeah i'm properly taken with it um like there's i mean if I had to criticize it, um, from what I've seen so far, there's not like a huge amount of variation level to level. Like most of the bosses I've seen are kind of the same. That might be me not perceiving the nuances properly. Um, but on the face of it, it's like, oh, it's it's that boss again, um, <laughs> like quite a bit. But um, yeah, so it's out on Steam, and I believe console ports are in the works. Um, for later this year um yeah i've really really enjoyed it um the other thing i've been playing is the resident evil 4 remake um so i'm now i'm on the lake bit but you know when you you're on the boat and you and you like i think that was in the original Th- it this was, is the yeah. it, it was because yeah. this is the weird experience i'm having of, of this is that i played the original on when the wii version came out but I don't remember it well enough to be like, ah, that's different. Oh, they didn't do that last time. And kind of like, I, I assume this is all exactly as it was before. I don't really remember I, it I saw that a comparison well. <laughs> video. The boat bit is different in this. Okay. Because in the original okay. one, it is just that sequence. Mm-hmm. Whereas I believe, because I haven't played the remake, you have mm-hmm. a bit more free roaming and different islands or places to... Yes. Yeah, some, so yeah. that wasn't in the original. Right. That's I... Cool. Um, yeah. It, it's so good. It's still so good um like and you know like not really liking the other resident evil games not their fault it's totally mine um and like knowing that the remakes like did a lot for like resident evil 2 and 3 and like changed them quite a lot this like i don't think had to do as much but it's so in, on the one hand it's kind of it's really impressive that they've remade it so faithfully and yes they've they've changed a few things that are cool and interesting but also, like, it must have been quite 
daunting, right, to like remake Resident Evil 4 because that's one that people will, would still revisit and be like, no, this is still like one of the best action games ever made or, you know, action slash horror games. Um, so yeah, it's just super impressive and I'm having a really good time with it. And, and again, like I've said this before, but to emphasize, like I can't do horror stuff. I can't do scary stuff this is just a really good action game that looks like a horror game as far as i'm concerned like you know when you reach that like i think it's the, it's the i think it's the third chapter when you, you're doing the like stuff and it's proper like it, it feels like you're settling into it which it, mm. i it's not a feeling i would associate with horror games it's like yeah you know like there's the very tense stuff with the village at the start and everything but there's this this section where it's like yeah you've kind of found your feet now we're going to let you explore you know, you can st- like you start. You know, you're doing all these like weird extra objectives. Like, you know, it's this like ostensibly scary game, but then you get notes saying like, "I want a golden egg," and I'm not going to tell you what for. And you'll get- <laughs> and you'll get some special gems if you See, sell the, the golden thing. egg. It's, it's, it's just, just silly. not as sinister. It's not yeah. as sinister as the yeah. other like Resident mm-hmm. Evil games. Is why mm-hmm. it's like it's an action game basically. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, and that's why I mean I I enjoyed four when it first came out. Um, mm-hmm. I remember playing. I played it on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't dig it as much as I think a lot of people did because mm-hmm. I kind of I, I was kind of sad that they like left some of the. Mm-hmm. The more sort of sinister sides of uh, mm-hmm. Resident Evil behind, and that's why, like with like Resident Evil Five and Re- Resident Evil Six, I think it went even further, like in the sort of the action direction, yeah. and yeah, yeah. was never so happy with that. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, with Seven, it was brilliant again. Mm-hmm. It's... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I again, I haven't played that much of it. I gather some of the really silly stuff from like towards the end has just been like taken out, which is weird um but the general tone of it still like stays on that really weird line between being a horror game and just being really stupid and i love it it's, um, and i'm like and i'm like way more into because i know we talked about last week like i was saying like oh my god like restart it on normal difficulty which i have done um because i did feel that easy difficulty was like too easy and was it meant i didn't have to conserve ammo or give a shit particularly whereas now i'm like i'm always making sure i like go for the headshot run in for the roundhouse kick and then back away again and um like all that stuff I, yeah so good um yeah resident evil 4 good game turns out um <laughs> right a quick couple of questions if you want to send us a question go to tcgs.co forward slash dear tcgs Phil Walters says at 3 p.m. on Sunday, April the 23rd, the UK government will test their new emergency alert system by sending a message to almost all mobile phones in the country. If you could send a message to every phone in the UK, what would it be and why? It's simple, isn't it? Yeah. Please stop voting Tory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, yeah, I, people will be I, like, oh, it's a psyop. I'm not doing it. I'm going to vote Tory. Also, also, I had the exact same thought, mm-hmm. and it's like, Who'd you vote for instead? <laughs> Anybody but not the Tories. <laughs> I mean, we, 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 you know, you're generously assuming everyone's going to like pay attention to yeah, what the message true. says. Would you not yeah. plug the podcast, James? Nah. No. No. Okay. It's not as just important. Don't don't just direct them specifically to like the merch store. Buy a t-shirt. <laughs> tcgs.co forward slash store i think it is or shop yeah. i can't remember sorry matt or, or um, just a, yeah don't vote tory then in brackets www.patreon.com <laughs> slash tcgs <laughs> 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 um i don't know i'll I do something know. quite quite lovely um yeah be like something like don't underestimate how easy it is to make someone's day. You know, just something Aww. nice to make people treat people nice because, you know, this world yeah. needs things like that. But I don't know how that will come across. I was going to say, I think, too, but to, yeah, people will be, people reject that for being too nice, wouldn't they? It needs to be. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'll do vote for Tory as well then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just like, you know, give them a heads up, like what's coming out on Game Pass this week. Mm. <laughs> so I, I know it's it'll just you know text is like look i know it's looking a bit sparse but red falls soon so don't worry about it it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> um maria mendieta says dear tcgs cocaine bears last week's episode had a slightly aeronautic flavor to it with talk of unreliable pilots and your hilarious discussion of ace combat 7 
With virtual reality offering increasingly immersive experiences of flying, what do you think will be the next big leap when it comes to controlling flight mechanics in games? I personally hope for a bat VR simulator capable of detecting subtle finger movements in order to make real-time changes to the wing membrane's shape. Keep up the oh. brilliant work. I mean, this is the, this is the uh, elastic member coming is. back again, isn't it? It is. <laughs> I mean, the thing with a, a VR bat simulator, bats can't really see. Hmm. But then I suppose you could do the, oh my God, you could actually, sorry, I'm just thinking, so you could do a VR, a VR back, and this is nothing to do with flights, this is just how, you know, how because obviously they use like sonar, right? And I don't know if you're aware, people can actually learn to do sonar, right? You can make clicking noises with your mouth and with enough training, you can like broadly like perceive the environment around you by listening to how the click sounds. Um so you could do that, right? You do the you have a bat simulator where you've got a VR headset on and you're doing the clicking noises and it's make it and in your ears it sounds different depending on the environment in the game. So it's a VR sim like a VR game where you don't actually see anything. But it's just a microphone and some positional headphones. That could work. I mean it you, could. Uh, Dead Daredevil had you you got to see physically where yes. things were, but yeah. just the audio. Yeah. Alone will be good. Yeah. That reminds me of a game that came out called uh, The Veil. It's a VR game, but mm -hmm. there's no visuals. Mm -hmm. But it's 3D audio and is okay. actual combat in it as well. Oh, so you wow. can parry and dodge. Um, have a look for it. Yeah, it's just yeah, it completely cool. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a world exploration and you can just walk around. I'm not plugging it, but I'm just saying there is a game that mm. is just audio only. Mm. Um, mm. See, I've only just realized, because obviously... I saw this question on the dock mm. a good few hours ago mm -hmm. and I was like, why, why, why fingers and the <laughs> membrane? And then I realized that uh, bat swings, just their big long fingers. Yeah. And it's only just clicked with me that that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only so bit the bat go. actually has control over is just the, yeah, like the arms and the wing is just a big leathery flap. Yeah. I was, I was just thinking for my answer for this, rather than going straight into the flight bit, it would if it's like planes, mm -hmm. like have a have a VR game that's about the pre stress flight that we have all at at, at the airports, you know, checking for your passport, <laughs> you know, making sure you're at the gate in time, you know, making sure that your family's there. Put that in VR. That's I would, that's something that we can all relate that to. Is, that's just an anxiety dream for me. <laughs> yeah, that that there's a market for it, a, hopefully. <laughs> no, that sounds like the Actually no wait. I I never have stressful times at the airport just because I turn up like four hours earlier than I'm mm. supposed to. Oh, jeez. Yeah. And with like because... multiple copies of all that. Like God, that'd be the, the final level would be, yeah, like peak COVID air travel. <laughs> where you've got like all the documents and you've got all your tests organized and stuff. See, yeah, I, I did thought... that once. I turned up like about, I was about four hours early for my flight mm -hmm. and I still nearly missed it because wow. I was playing on my Vita. <laughs> <laughs> What an advert. What game are you playing? Do you remember? I was playing Killzone. Killzone? <laughs> it's, it's like Fucking hell. <laughs> See, when... I had to run. It was horrible. <laughs> See, when, when uh, Sean, when you were saying about um, like a pre-flight, I mm. thought you were going to say like be in one of the uh, the flight, the people with the sticks. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> that would yeah, be cool. Doing semaphore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. God, and if you just misdirected entire planes and they just fucking crash and oh jeez, <laughs> oh, like oh no, no whoops! Because there's there's that, that guy, <laughs> there's a guy who is I he's either a pilot or mm. he's he's either a pilot or he's like air traffic control, mm. like that's his actual job, mm. and he goes into like multiplayer flight sim games mm. and will talk to other people he will basically oh, go up right. in like the air traffic yeah. um tower and mm. he'll basically talk to people using all the exact mm. oh wow like mm -hmm. terminology and everything mm -hmm. but obviously people mess with him yeah. and don't take it seriously and mess around mm. and he'll adapt to that as well and it's right. It's brilliant. It's so funny. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember the channel. I can't remember the guy's name. Mm. You can probably find it on YouTube. Like if you search for like air traffic control flight sim yeah. funny something like that, you'll probably be able to find it. But yeah, they're really really good. Cool. Nice. <laughs> 
Uh, last questions from MD Krabuffs. Is there any product that you couldn't live without? Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, product? I mean, the the boring answer is phone, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I hate it, but also I genuinely don't know how I would manage day to day without one at this point. And not in like a, oh, I, I need to check Twitter all the time. I mean, lit- just like in terms of general logistics and being in touch with people. Um, don't see. see I don't how... hate it. I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I, I mean, it's better now like that I'm swipe phone. It was shit. Yeah, I mean, now that I'm on on Twitter less, <laughs> mm. it's a much better relationship with with my phone than I used to have. I think. Um, mm. but then I'm just spending more time on Instagram instead, which is marginally less toxic. Those reels, they get you, don't they? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I mean, um, fa- also. Facebook, Facebook reels are so you obviously have like TikTok is mm-hmm. good, good stuff, mm-hmm. and then Instagram is is worse. Instagram worse reels are worse. And, uh, mostly regurgitated and, TikTok stuff, but yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, but then Facebook is a whole it's unhinged, another isn't it? lower <laughs> tier of garbage. The they fucking, are they are dreadful. The amount of yeah, like stuff like I mean, I don't go on Facebook very often these days, but like. Yeah, when you see like the, the amount of videos that are like, wait till the end, and you <laughs> fucking do, and you're just like, why? Why did nothing happen? Why did I do they're that? like ten minutes long as well? They're oh always yeah, yeah, like yeah, ten yeah. minutes, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm gonna be that really boring person, mm-hmm. but the Manelian Manelial and me is gonna say my air fryer. Like I was using it before; it was cool. In fairness. <laughs> And if you've moved home and not had a microwave and a kettle and all these things, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and prior to COVID, it's Mm -hmm. just amazing. I I know Mm -hmm. a lot of people just use it as a meme now, but air fryers are good. Air fryers are good. Air fryers are really good. My biggest regret is that I didn't buy a bigger one. (laughs) No. (laughs) Because it's, seriously, it's like, the one we've got is fine. Like, it's Mm. all right. But I wish I, do you know, Sean, Mm. when we first talked about this, you talked Mm. about having one with like the two. Two trays. Yeah. yeah, A two tray one. I was thinking that, that would be quite nice, actually. Yeah. We never use the oven anymore because it's rubbish. (laughs) And it's just, just, it's it's brilliant. You know, something about reheating pizza in an air fryer. It's just. Have you made a a grilled cheese sandwich in an air fryer? Yeah. So good. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It, it's like you've deep fried it, but you haven't. It's fine. Yeah, it's probably fine. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I can fit a whole chicken in mine, oh, and it nice. will cook it within fifteen minutes. Wow! Properly, oh, by the way, not yeah. as in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I think that's us, James. You're going to do the socials. Oh crap! <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> okay. Every time. No, Every because time. I forgot. I... I genuinely forgot this time that this was happening. I mean, um, I'll, I'll I'll put you out of your misery. I'm not I'm not streaming this week. That's well, I'm not streaming could... either. Oh no, well, there we go. Either, so. No streams this week. But if we were streaming, um, then you could subscribe <laughs> to our channel if you have Twitch Prime Gaming because we'd appreciate that. Um, we also have a Patreon at Patreon dot com. Is it is it TCGS or is it TCGS Co? It's TCGS. It's at the top of right. the uh, the document. Right. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, sorry, yes. Uh, then it's patreon.com slash TCGS mm-hmm. and then tcgs.co for everything else. Thank you. I was, I was, I was all right. Yeah. Actually, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, late, isn't it? It is late. <laughs> sorry, yeah, it really is late. This has, this has been a long one. I was like, until I saw the list of everyone's games, I was like, ah, oh, it'd probably be a short one tonight, actually. And then it's, yeah. But it's been lovely. Sean and Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. You. It is you much appreciated. So next week, so James and Dave are back. I'm back. James is away again. Mm. Can't remember if we've talked about getting a guest or not, <laughs> but you'll find out in a week's time. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening. And um, thanks for letting us be natural. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>